This is the Concord FinCom uh, committee meeting. I'm Chris Reynolds, I'm the chair. And so I'm gonna open up the meeting with a, uh, a roll call. So I'm Chris Reynolds and I'm here. Ray Andrews. He's here too. Okay. Dee Ortner. Present. Eric Dahlberg. Present. Mary Hartman. Here. Kathy Kukulo. Here. Uh, Amrith Kumar. Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me now? Yes. John okay. Hickling. Present. Dean Banfield. Present. Greg Gorello. Present. And Peggy Briggs. I'm present. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so we have an agenda tonight, which you've seen. And um, what we're going to do, so just to remind folks where we are, so this is a capital planning discussion this evening. So the new process that was um, put into place and started in September. So there's a series of three meetings. The first meeting occurred between the select board and uh, the school committee back in September. This is the second meeting that the FinCom will review this new uh, plan, this 10 year capital plan. And then there's a third meeting uh, again, with the select board and the school committee where they um, finalized the, the, the plan. So that's the purpose of this meeting. It's also another opportunity for public comment. So uh, what we're going to do tonight is look at that plan. We're also going to review its impact on the tax bill. So what does the spending and the related debt do to the tax bill? And uh, we're going to look uh, at some ideas if we're interested in reducing the impact of that tax bill. And in particular, there we'll be talking about the middle school. So the middle school and any potential recommendations to how to absorb that debt. And then we will open it up to public comment. So that's how tonight's gonna go. You received the deck in advance uh, that Kerry prepared. So um, she's gonna walk us through that, but that's how we're gonna move through the evening. And at the end, my goal is that to the extent that we have them, if there are recommendations we would make about the plan or the debt, uh, that we would have agreement on those and that I would uh, uh, draft some sort of a letter to uh, the town and the select board to say, this is what FinCom's reaction was to the plan so that they have that in advance of that third meeting. That makes sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay, that's what we're off to go do. So uh, I'm going to uh, turn it off over to Carrie and take us through that document. Thank you and, and good evening. Um, the superintendent and town manager and uh, representative from the board of selectmen and school committee are in the audience. You, I don't know if you'd like to have them come into the meeting. Um, I was not going to promote panelists uh, because this is really a FinCom meeting, Carrie. So if they, if if folks want to become panelists, I can put some folks up, but only a few. Okay. So I'm I think I'm okay leaving it this way. All right. So let's get started then. Um, I thought it might be helpful to members of committee just to take a quick look at what our capital planning process in town was before the capital planning task force and what has changed as, as a result of the capital planning task force. And so on the uh, left-hand side of the screen is before the task force, on the right is after. And I think the, the best thing that, or one of the best things that came out of, of the task force is we're now talking about three types of projects as tier one, tier two, and tier three, which is so much easier than the terms that we were using before. So our, our um, tier one projects, which, which we had been calling capital outlay, are typically projects or purchases that are up to $100,000, are funded through cash, uh, referred to as capital outlay, and they're part of the town manager's fiscal year plan. Uh, again, before the task force, the second category we referred to as the debt plan, and this was anything that was between, typically between 100000 but under $2 million, and we were really looking at single year purchases, not 
not phases of multi of multi year projects. So between 100 and 2 million. Um, this was also part of the town manager's fiscal year plan, but these items were funded through the issuance of debt. And then the third category uh, previously called just referred to as very large projects. We would consider this anything over $2 million in a single year. And these would typically show up in standalone or separate warrant articles at town meeting. And they were generally funded through the issuance of excluded debt, though not 100% not of the time. But there really was no uniform process to advance these projects. So these were more opportunistic particularly with the smaller projects, and they were often related to land purchases. And, and they would, would just sort of come up, um, you know, at, at annual town meetings, sometimes we'd have a special town meeting for these projects, but not really a standard process that we were going through. So then as a result of, of the Capital Planning Task Force, again, tier one, tier two, tier three, really no changes to tier one, the one change to tier two really is um, moving from a $2 million maximum up to a $5 million maximum. And, and looking at that either single year or multi-year. So we have a number of projects over the last couple of years, particularly park development projects where we've had phases in each, in each year. So we wanna look at, at the project as a whole whether it will be funded in one, one year or multi-year. And, um, and so that, that's really the difference there. And then the tier three is, is what we're focusing on. So tier three is over $5 million, whether it's a single year or multi-year, uh, but, but we will now have a uniform process. So, and, so Carrie, I'm sorry, if you can stay on that page for a second. Um, uh, this is the item I sent you a question about. So I understand how the, the process for the um, capital planning was divided into these three components, including the focus really on the over 5 million. I don't understand, or I didn't understand that the somehow that that would mean that from a budgeting perspective, uh, we would have a shift in, in tier two from 100,000 to 5 million. So in other words, it, it seems like what we, what we tried to come up with for a planning process has changed the way we're gonna budget for projects. Is that, is that correct? Well, so there's, there's definitely a difference in, in the threshold and it is obviously very significant. Uh, our debt plan or our tier two plan on an annual basis is between four and a half and six million dollars. So it is going to be very difficult and really impossible to, to have five million dollar projects on an annual basis, given, given the, the constraints on the, um, on the dollar amount and our existing policies related to debt talk about no more than 5% of, of debt per year for capital. So I think we're going to have to do some work on that tier two. Uh, okay. But that, that really wasn't the focus of, of the capital planning task force. No, it, it wasn't. And if that was an unintended consequence, I, you know, I, I don't know. I think, I think, you know, you might want to go back and look at that because I don't think that was the intention was to somehow limit tier two spending. Anyway, that, so we don't need to solve that one this evening, but that's sort of an interesting um, looks like fallout from that. Can I ask a question? Sure. Is there, what was the rationale for that change? Because other than that one change, it seems like We've got new labels. 100K became 100K. 2 million became 5 million. And we got new labels from capital outlay, debt plan, very large projects at tier one, two, three. What was the rationale for the change? So I, I can tell you there was a lot of discussion at the task force level 
about the minimum threshold for three. And there was there were some members who thought it should be 10 million. And and I don't think nobody was looking at it <clears throat> that anything really that anything under that tier three threshold. I, I we weren't really talking about the impact. I certainly mentioned the the impact to tier two and to our current process. The impetus or the what we were getting at was these very large projects. And what's the definition of a very large project? And again, some people thought 10 million was really the minimum for a very large project, um, but the majority felt that five, it was 5 million. And that at 5 million, um, it needs to go through this additional review process that has, that has a lot more public uh, opportunities for public to participate. Does that effectively mean that as a result projects which in the old mechanism would need to go to a standalone warrant article now effectively get made part of the town manager's FY plan? Maybe not 5 million, maybe not the entire 5 million, but a $3 million project could now be taken away from the town meeting and instead made part of the town manager's FY plan? Is that is that the intention here? Or is that what is going to happen if this moves forward? So it, it's just really a different process. The town manager's plan is also a, that is, um, that goes through a public process as well. Um, but the process is, is different than for these very large projects. And uh, Amrit, that process also shows line items. It shows all the detail. So I don't think something will get buried there. Um, and this is not something, so this was enacted. So the select board, this says recommendation on the page. It was accepted. So we are here, this is happening. So, so I don't think it was the intention to, um, uh, as I say, I think this might be an unintended consequence and, and perhaps more work, you know, perhaps people need to take a look at it, but. Uh, the real focus was on creating a process around the projects over 5 million and having coordination between the schools and the towns, having an integrated plan. That was the real um, purpose, I guess, of that, of that work, if you will. So my apologies. I thought it was a recommendation and therefore it was looking for our input. But if this is a fait accompli, then yeah. we, we say thank you. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I think okay. we should say thank you for one thing, which is that that the very large projects, even if they were at the $2 million level before, are are now in a much more controlled state. These things used to just be, you know, they used to burst forth, you know, from different silos and then get proponents and get on the warrant. You'd have a discussion about them. And now you have a you have a much more coordinated uh, way of getting something like that to come forward to town meeting. Um, regarding your comment, Amrith, about about you know them being kind of buried, so to speak, in the town manager's budget, we do vote on a the debt plan, and it does have, as Chris pointed out, it does have individual line items which can be uh, modified, struck, or whatever during the town meeting. So there is an opportunity. It's just that they're part of a slate that just shows up as one warrant article. So they they do have you know they're kind of melded in there but they can absolutely be modified on a line item basis uh, during town meeting discussion. So they're still there, it's just uh, less likely because of their, their, uh, their grouping that there will be a lot of separate discussion on any given one. Okay, keep going, Carrie. Uh, I see Peggy has her hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Peggy. Yes, my apologies. Um, Dean just made the implication that because of this, new um, capital planning task force procedure that standalone capital warrant articles wouldn't just quote pop up like they've done in the past. I, I don't see that in this slide, but maybe there's some other limitation on that elsewhere. It's not on the slide. So I think I think it's a function of the planning that goes on through this process. One would hope things don't pop on. It doesn't prevent it. It doesn't do anything to prevent that from happening. Um, 
just a question about what the uniform process would be and are we are we going to be better served if the uniform process were used for a say four million dollar project or will it not be an option because i, I understand you... it's going to be a line item on the town manager's fy plan but if the town manager's fy plan is a large number of million dollars and you have one line item which is four million dollars to dean's point the odds that it's going to get a lot of scrutiny is dramatically lower than if it was a standalone warrant article under it very is, large projects. It is, a, it is a standalone warrant article, Emirates. The, the debt plan is a standalone warrant article that but, has all the, all the detail behind that. But yeah, so it, it has individual it's not buried. It, it's yeah. not buried in the overall town manager's budget. So it's a standalone warrant article. But it's not for the one item, Mary. It's, it's, it's a standalone warrant yeah. article with multiple line items That's which right. could be a million here a million there that kind of thing you right know? but yeah. it's right okay so the the process associated with the tier three projects is shown on this slide um the the results of the capital planning task force were a recommendation that they're that a 10 year plan, capital plan, including both town and school projects be prepared on an annual basis, um, that there be integrated decision-making between the town in the, and the school in preparing this 10 year plan, that we use a standard evaluate, a, a set of standard evaluation criteria to review each of the projects in um, coming up with the the priority order, that we prepare a debt template which summarizes the sequencing and estimated impact of each of the projects that is being um, recommended in the 10-year plan, and that we also prepare an interactive tax impact calculator for residents. So residents can go in and using their own homes assessed valuation, they can come up with, with a uh, a closer estimate of what the cost of any of these projects is. And then uh, also coming out of the recommendation was an opportunity for citizen comment on the plan. And the chair mentioned that at the beginning of the meeting, there are three different opportunities for the public to, uh, to be made aware of the 10 year plan and to be able to comment. So the first is in September, and in September, it begins with a joint meeting between the select board and the school committee where the draft plan is presented and there is an official 45 day public comment period. So this is the first year that we're going through this new process. We did have the meeting in September. Uh, some members of the public were there and uh, the, the draft plan was presented and we did not receive any written comment within the 45 day public comment period. The second step is the meeting we're having this evening. This is the finance committee forum on capital planning. Um, if there were any revisions to the plan based on either the joint meeting or public comment, those would be presented in an updated plan uh, this evening. And then we would update uh, the estimated impact and really the, the discussion at the finance committee level is, is about smoothing the impact of the debt. And we'll get into that later in the meeting. And then the third and final meeting is another joint meeting of the select board and the school committee where the final plan is presented. And uh, with the thought being that, that any, any projects in the first year would then be placed on the annual town meeting board. So, Carrie, just one question. I can just confirming it, I think, since I observed that first meeting. Um, there were no changes uh, proposed or made to the schedule at that first meeting. Is that correct? That's yes, that's correct. Thank you. So there are five projects that are showing in 10 year. Oh, there's a hand raised. Yep, Ray. Yeah, just it, 
it seems that the school committee meets with a select board. Uh, is there any uh, corresponding meeting between the town and the, and the select board, or is this is that handled differently? It, it it's the procedure that they agreed to, Ray. So it's right there. That's what those are the meetings that are that were agreed to. There is no okay. special meeting with the town. No. Okay. Certainly, I mean the the, the town would be involved in all the discussions, right? So the town has to provide information, but the, the, the process is as you see it. Okay, okay, thank you. I have a, I have a question. Um, Carrie, you bring up a good point that one of the outcomes of this process was to get more public input. And I'm wondering, um, was any thought given, or what was the thought given to adding enterprise fund uh, capital plan to, to this process? Was, was that discussed at the capital planning task force and what was your thinking? Um, it certainly was, it certainly was discussed, but the, the emphasis was on the tax impact and understanding the tax impact of, of the projects. And so the, the enterprise fund projects are funded through user fees. And so they are not part of this process, although we do show in the in the capital plan, in the town's capital plan, we do show the enter, enterprise fund projects. Is that a big portion of our borrowing and what we borrow for the enterprise funds? Overall borrowing? It, it hasn't been to date, but it certainly will be when the treatment plant uh, is when that project is started. And, and that is, you know, that project is getting teed up. So that that will be a large portion of uh, borrowing. But right now we're hoping that most of that, if not all of it, will be borrowed through the, the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust. Uh -huh. And um, there's an opportunity for low interest loans, no interest loans, and principal forgiveness, depending on what we qualify for. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the, the, these are the, the five projects that are included, currently included in the 10 year period, fiscal 23 to 32. These are the same five projects that were presented at this, the meeting in September. And uh, the, the purpose of tonight's meeting is, is not necessarily to go into, go through these projects in detail, but just so you understand what the projects are and the magnitude. These are in prior the order. Um, the last two projects, I have a note, they're not currently within the fiscal 23 to 32 period. And, and maybe that seems strange because that's what we're supposed to be talking about. I think absent the middle school project, these are the four projects that the town would be proposing in the next 10 years. So we did include them, but we certainly understand that because of the middle school project, which is the highest priority, we understand these projects are not going to be moving at the same pace that they would absent uh, the middle school project. And I can tell you um, even the, the four projects that are identified are projects that came out of the need study that the town completed a couple of years ago. Um, and the dollar amounts really are, are probably not representative of the actual cost of, of the projects. So these are placeholder amounts. They were the best estimates when that needs assessment was prepared two to three years ago now. Um, and so I, I think it, it's more important to understand the public safety complex, this, this would be a new standalone facility as opposed to the fifth priority, which is renovations to the existing public safety complex. Um, the two DPW projects, 
there's there's also a need for for a DPW a new DPW uh, CPW facility, but understanding that the cost of that is is not something that could be uh, managed within the next ten years. There are likely some smaller projects that could be done to extend the life of the existing facility in site. Mary? Chris, I have a question. Um, Carrie, the public safety complex, uh, is that, does that 20 million include the purchase of land or are we assuming we're gonna, we have land available already? You know, that, that is a, a placeholder to give you an idea of the magnitude. And I think whether or not that includes, it doesn't necessarily, um, it's just not that detailed, I guess is, is what I'm saying. It, it's just to show that, that is, it is a substantial, that, that project has a substantial price tag. Okay. Ray, do you have a question? Or is your hand still up from earlier? Oh, looks like you're all set, Lois. No, I'm sorry. no I don't have a question. That's okay, great. Lois? Yeah, just a quick question. I don't understand um, the relationship between priority two and priority five. If priority five has to do with renovating the existing complex, um, wouldn't that be superseded if we, if we rebuild a new complex? No, I, I'm not sure if you'd, if you'd like the town manager to, to jump on and answer. Sure. I'm just confused by it. I don't want to. I don't want to take us down a tangent. Um, so they are. They are two different projects. Both. Both are needed. Um, and I. I think if you if you want to get into that level of detail, this is outside of, of the, my um, scope. And I think he would be the better person to answer any detail. Uh, I don't want. To, I don't think we need to take the time with it now. Um, you know, we're not. Um, I think this is more than adequate for present purposes, Carrie. So um, we'll just put a pin in it. Okay. All right. Okay. And so this here is the model that the Capital Planning Task Force developed to show the estimated impact of of these projects and the sequencing. This here shows the, uh, the tax impact, the annual tax impact. The top uh, shows all existing exempt debt, what the impact is to the median household. And then uh, the first priority, the middle school, assuming the project is $100 million. Uh, this is how we, laid out the sequencing of, of debt issuance that in the first year uh, we would issue short-term debt in the amount of 35 million in the second year short-term debt in the amount of 70 million and then the the third year either short well we're showing short-term debt and then permanently financing it in year four uh, this is just one of a number of scenarios to fund this particular project. So Carrie, can you just explain the assumptions under that? So the assumptions, so you can see in FY26, when the project comes on, the short-term financing is converted into bonds and that impact to the median tax bill is 1,024. So you see that line there, year four, where we're bonding and, but the assumption at a thousand is what interest rate and what term, Carrie? So this the thousand twenty four is the twenty. Let's see the twenty year. Twenty five year. I think it's I think it's actually twenty, but it says that twenty five on the chart. Okay, yeah. So this, this is based on how the town of Concord, this following the same financing model that the town has used 
for all of its um, elementary school projects. And um, so that, that obviously is a, is a big point of discussion and we'll talk about that a little bit okay, later. Okay, but just, just tell the committee then what that is, right? What is the term? So it's 20 years. And what interest rate are you assuming? Yeah, it's mislabeled on the chart. That's okay. What what interest rate are you using? That that is the four percent rate. Right. Okay. So it's at a conservative interest rate, at the at a conservative term, if you will. It's our traditional term, which is twenty years. Oh, okay. Sorry, I I see the mislabeled. Yeah, it's, it says the wrong thing on the chart, but that's that's okay. Okay, so that's what the thousand is. The other, the other, so if you, if we just focus on that piece, right, that's obviously the, if you look at where we are in 23 from the existing debt, the component of it that's in your median tax bill, it's about $800. And if you, you know, you'd be adding, you'd be more than doubling it essentially with a thousand for the middle school. So it has a very large impact on the, on the debt component of our median tax bill. However, at the same time that that debt would be coming up, there's other debt from the, from the elementary schools that goes down. So if you look at the, at the bottom of the schedule, you'll see uh, 981, 1,040, 1,241. You can see that the net impact of the middle school is not 1,024 in this chart. It's in the worst years, which look like they are 26, 27, and 28. It goes from 800 today up to 1630, 1514, 1473. So you're up 800, 700, 600 dollars on the median tax bill for debt, as it's projected on this schedule in that three-year period. So that three-year period is the very peak, 26, 27, 28. It's, it's not that much lower in 29, but it starts to come down. Everybody see what I'm look what I'm pointing at there? That's the thing you need to focus on. That is, in my opinion, the problem area, right? So it's a it's a problem for the the pop that it gives to the tax bill, which is 600, 700, 800 bucks. And it's it's problematic in terms of the overall capacity, right? So if, if you're if you're jammed in those years just with the middle school. You can see we also uh, carry loaded in here for just, I think for illustrative purposes, what would happen if we loaded in some debt for the salt shed, which I think was priority three. And uh, we don't, we don't uh, I'm sorry, the public safety is also in there coming in in 30. We don't have a lot of room for other things, right? So that's the other, uh, I think the other conclusion or observation that I draw from this pro forma chart. Carrie, do you have any anything else to say on that? I, I think the only other thing I would say is we we do show public sa the pe public safety complex as being the second highest priority, but because of the magnitude of that, there's a potential that the priority three might advance before that and and hold off on the second highest priority until we get further out into this 10 year period where there may be more of an appetite to advance a project of that size. Okay, now we can maybe have some questions. So I see, Greg, you have your hand up. Yeah, Christine, you just said we don't have room. Are we actually hitting a boundary of like debt service or just nope. what the, no, what the, just, what the yeah. end person is gonna pay? Yeah, what yes, what the taxpayer is going to pay. That's all I'm looking at. I'm okay, looking I just wanted to make sure there wasn't a bet. Like we're actually like nope. hitting some. No, there are, there are some boundaries. We don't come anywhere near them. They're based on um, okay. uh, the fair value of the property. So, but we have we do have some financial policies around debt service. I think Carrie, I don't know if we hit any of those. Uh, no, we we don't have any that are related to exempt debt. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Amrith. Just to, to get a clarification on what you're saying. So in 23, the bill is expected to be 981. 
but by 26, it is close to doubling. And then we claim it's gonna come down according to this projection. But this is gonna depend on a town meeting action in 23 in the, in, in the amount of the uh, $35 million. It's uh, going to be- uh, Of 100 million. Now in 23, is it 100 million or is it 35 million? The town meeting action will be for the full amount and the bonding will occur over multiple years. Yeah. So they're gonna you're gonna okay. vote on the price. Yeah. You're gonna vote on the full hundred. And so then... it will be done in one in one shot in 23, and the payments will be the payments will start showing up in tax bills over a course of three years, um, going up from 981 to 1630 and then potentially coming down after that. Um, Right, okay. because other debt is dropping, not because the middle the middle school the middle school is staying at a thousand bucks, right? But other debt is dropping. If you look at the top line, yeah, the, top, just, the top section is coming yeah, down. Yeah, okay. right, exactly. exactly. Um, and just just as a as a maybe to make it easier when you're describing this the next time around, if you have a spreadsheet, if you can keep the uh, column and row headers, that would be great. Like A B C D one two three four, that would be easier for you to describe it. Okay. Any other questions or any discussion on this? So any reaction to this? So, so the FinCom has had a discussion about this for a while. So if you looked at our last two or three FinCom reports where we do the five-year projections, and I know last year we, we included the, uh, the potential effect of the middle school debt in the projection. And we showed that you know, the effect on the median tax bill was quite significant. Uh, out in, in some of these outer years here as we as the debt comes on board. So um, this isn't new news from a, from a FinCom perspective. Obviously we have some new, some new members. So I wanted to make sure that everybody saw this. So again, there's assumptions in this, right? So uh, assumptions can change. And that's one of the things I, I wanted to talk about was to say, if this is the situation, there's only, and if, if the tax bump is higher than we would like, there's only a couple of choices, right? So you can lower the overall cost of the school, which has been tried now by the, by the middle school building committee for some time. And it, I don't think that's going to happen. There could be some offsets to it. And so that's still open. Maybe there are some other ways to reduce the cost. You can delay the timing of the project. Again, I don't think that that's likely. And so it's gonna hit when it's gonna hit most likely the way it shows on the schedule. Or you can think about uh, smoothing the debt hit. And you can do that in, um, I think, two ways. You can change the term of the debt. So you lessen the effect on an annual basis. And you can also build up your stabilization reserves to offset the impact of the debt in the years that it hits. And those are two things that I wanted to talk about with the committee. Um, but I, I'll pause there to see if there's any more questions or comments on that. What about the options of delaying some of the other projects like the salt shed? Because yep, the salt shed is coming yep. online at the same time when you're gonna be picking up your peak debt here. So if you can push that out by two years, what yep. is the cost gonna to be to do that? You can see it right there. Well, you can see what the impact is. It's not a great impact, but it's not bad. I agree, you could do that. Sorry, no, but when I said, what is the cost? I mean, it, we're doing it in FY25 because we need it for some reason. What is it gonna cost us if we wanna delay the project? What is the counterbalancing expense, counterbalancing expense we're gonna have in order to, yeah. I don't know, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if Kerry does. I don't know what the, it, 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 I have a feeling it was, it's on, again, this is a kind of a pro forma schedule, but it was, it was on there uh, because if you waited until 29 or 30 to advance anything, you wouldn't get much else done. So I think because it's a smaller project is why it was pushed forward. I don't, I don't think, I don't know if there's any uh, 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 necessary timing on it. We can certainly, uh, you wanna promote Stephen, uh, Chris Carmody. And so we can ask him if there's a, uh, um, a timing issue that we're missing here. Stephen Crane. Yep. He's joining. Great, thank you. Hi. Hi, Stephen, how are you? So I just want to make sure, 
Yeah, it's right. I want to make sure I understand the timing question. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the way the schedule works, the salt shed is coming online, looks like an FY25. So Amrit's question was, is there a reason why we couldn't delay that to avoid adding uh, some, some debt in years that were already peak years? Um, I, I'm not that proficient with the physical condition of the salt shed, but I'm not, I'm, I haven't heard that it's critical. So as we sit here now, I, I don't think I can say no, yes, there's a reason. Uh, there's probably not a reason why it couldn't be pushed out. And, and I know this was rough. I did hear like the other questions about some of the projects. They really are needs that were identified in our, in our, in our facility study. And they are kind of placeholders. We do, we, we know we have them coming up but we knew that there was going to be some lag till we got to them because of the middle school. So that was kind of an, our operating assumption. Well, I guess the question, maybe I'll ask it differently. So we're, we're just looking at the, at the, uh, the, the big peak, right. That hits in 26, 27 and 28 on this schedule, Stephen. So if, if it was possible to push back the salt shed further, it would help, it would help lower that peak. You know, it, it doesn't make that, you know, that that's the only point we would make is if it's possible. Yeah, I, I, we understand that. Um, and, and our, like I said, I think we all have a commitment to try and, um, you know, minimize, you know, shocks to the debt service payments beyond that one. We, we the middle school is number one. We understand that. And we, we, you know, notwithstanding a critical failure that we, we, that is unplanned. I think we understand that the, um, you know, the timing of things uh, based on the timing of the middle school permanent financing. Right. Okay. Thank you. Peggy. Um, I, I just, just got a question, the 4% assumption uh, yeah. that obviously has a huge impact. Um, and I don't know what our most recent bonds have gone out at. So our, our most recent bonds are less percent. And what I would tell you about the 4% is uh, that is the recommendation of our financial advisor. We have, um, you know, sort of absent any hard timetable, we use 4%. So obviously even using 3%, which I think is perfectly reasonable now as we're approaching the um, approval of the project is, is a much more reasonable assumption. And when we look at the results of the, the brainstorming exercise, we can see what the impact of, of just reducing to 3%. And it's likely that some portion of that project, if it's financed in the next uh, couple of years, will do better than 3%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, what, uh, so I'm sorry. So what, what, what was that dollar amount? The two, four to three? I know on Willard, um, we... I, I don't we, think we have the dollar amount. So she's just saying that that's something that we can look at, right? And we will, we will look at, but I don't think she's calculated the dollar amount. Okay, so that's, that's you can't just play with that. Well, it's 1% it's on 100 million, right? So over, over some period of time, right? So it's so not when, insubstantial. When we move to the, the results of the brainstorming, it does show the reduction to 3% on one yep. of the Right, right. One of the charts we're gonna look at later, Peggy, I think you'll see some of that. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Farshar. Hi, sorry I'm late. Um, I just see a little notice saying Carrie started screen sharing, but is there anything on the screen that we should be looking at? Or is this yeah. just my problem yes. on my computer? Yeah, no, you, yeah, we can see the schedule that's up. There, it's from the deck that we sent out. Presented. Yeah, I'll go ahead and leave and try to join. So maybe, maybe that'll okay. make a difference, thanks. Okay. Um, Dean. Um, yeah. I've, just getting back to the question of whether we could defer the salt shed, if we could push that out by two years, uh, we would come to the level set in 26, where we've hit our peak, uh, our peak debt, which will then become level. And in if we bring on the salt shed in 27, the reduction in uh, the other exempt debt is almost identical to what we would bring on. So we would sort of level out and then continue. So a two-year reduction, I mean, a, a two-year push on the salt shed would get you some headroom where you hit the you hit the maximum on the school debt, and then you're getting some help from the reductions above. So that might be a place to stick it is just two years. That's just a thought. Yep. 
Good idea. Mary? Um, hi, Chris. You mentioned two things that we can do, which is one is to look at the term of the bonds and also look at um, the stabilization fund. I just want to be clear that these numbers do not reflect our existing $2 million stabilization fund. That's correct, right? That is correct. We're going to, we're going to look at that. Yes, okay, you're right. Okay. And, and also, it doesn't include any operational savings, the impact of any operational correct. savings. That, okay. That's right. Just, right. Just this, is just, this is purely what happens, right? Got it. We, we're going to start to look at um, some ways you could reduce it, but that Thank just you. to make sure people were clear on this is what happens. Okay. At, at these assumptions. Okay. All right. Let's keep going, Carrie. Okay, so back in September, the select board hosted a, um, a brainstorming exercise to, to talk about different assumptions and how they might impact the overall cost to the, or impact to the taxpayer uh, for the middle school project. And some of you, I know we're, we're at the meeting, maybe some of you had the opportunity to watch the, um, the video of that meeting, but this is the team. You, you want to change the slide, Carrie? Yes. Oh, is it not showing? No, nope. yeah, we're still on the proposed tier three slide. All right, hold on. Um, Is it? it came and went away. Yeah, okay. Is it up now? Yes. Okay. okay. And so, um, as a result of, or the end result of that meeting is that each of these different assumptions were assigned an owner up in this column. And so I've highlighted in um, the dark blue, the ones that were assigned to the finance committee. So the finance committee was assigned discussion of the stabilization fund, um, capturing cost efficiencies from building consolidation. And then there was some additional interest in having the finance committee look at the, the financing assumptions. Um, and then down here also a request to, to talk a little bit about the, the, the ARPA funds, the American Rescue Plan Act. Good. And so, let's see. This is what I just mentioned. And so the first topic is additional funding for the stabilization fund. So the town has deposited $2 million into the middle school stabilization fund. And there is an interest in growing that fund over the next couple of years to help smooth that peak. And there are three different items that I think are potential sources of additional funding to the stabilization fund. And they're listed here, free cash, the overlay surplus, and um, the last one override for debt stabilization fund. So at the last two meetings, we've actually talked about free cash. And I've let you know that although we don't have free cash certified yet, we are estimating a certification of eight and a half million dollars. If we assume a million dollars, for a property tax reduction in fiscal 23, like we have in the budget currently, that would leave us a balance of seven and a half million dollars in free cash, which represents 6.29% of budget. And the policy minimum is 5%. So there's definitely some opportunity for additional free cash to be placed into the stabilization fund. So just hold one second, right? So folks see that. So the minimum under the financial policy is just about 6 million, right? 5963592, that's the minimum. Right now, assuming town meeting approved the million dollars we, we used last week when we put it in our, our guideline estimate, right? We, we offset the taxes by a million dollars in our estimate last week. That, that leaves you, you know, the, the seven and a half million. So the minimum is 6 million. 
we would be at seven and a half million. So the most you could take, and, and I, I'm quite sure that the other requests on free cash would be a million and a half out of free cash. So I just want people to understand what the most is there. I didn't understand this slide the last time. There's one line in there that I just need a little explanation for what the surplus amount to be used in accordance with policy. It, what does yeah, that number represent? It, it, I just don't understand that number. It, 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 it's a negative number, Dean. And so it's really not, the, 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 the label doesn't match the words, right? <laughs> so that's what it is. So it should, this is the amount below below the max. So the 11, 11, nine, right, is the max. So if you were right. above that, you'd have to, you'd, you'd have some number that would be in there. We don't have a surplus. We're we under, okay. All right. So it's, it's just the it's label. The number. labels are wrong on the left-hand side. They assume a surplus. There isn't one. I see. Okay. Got, got it. Okay. Okay. All right. Keep going. So the, the next potential uh, place that we could look for some additional money to put into the middle school stabilization fund is the overlay account. So on an annual basis, the town sets aside funds for the overlay account. And this is an account that is available to the board of assessors to fund tax abatements and exemptions. Any amounts that are remaining from that annual um, set aside stay with the overlay account. So they don't, they don't close out to the general fund. They don't become part of free cash. They just stay with the overlay account and they accumulate. Um, at the current time, the balance of the overlay account is $2.9 million. So that's obviously very significant. Uh, at any point in time, the Board of Assessors can determine that they have too much in the overlay account and they can vote to release it. And if they vote to release it, it's called overlay surplus and it's, it's returned or turned over to the purpose or turned over to the town to then be reappropriated. And in the last couple of years, this, this has actually happened. It happened at our last annual town meeting where the Board of Assessors voted to release $150,000. And that was to fund the senior means tax program. And then back in 2017, they voted to release $1.5 million. And that was voted by town meeting reappropriated for technology initiatives. So we do have a, a past practice of the asking the Board of Assessors to determine if they have surplus to release for other purposes. So, so two, two things that, that I want to make sure, or I want you to take away from this. We have a significant balance already, $2.9 million. And in the fiscal 23 budget plan, we are assuming that we will add another $500,000. So given, given the current balance, I, I don't know, we don't need to do both because 2.9 is, is already pretty significant, um, but fiscal 23 is a revaluation year. So we should expect to receive uh, a, an additional number of abatement applications, not that they will be granted, but there, there may be an additional need for, um, for overlay. And I see just about everybody's hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Dean. A uh, couple of questions about the functioning of the assessor. Can the assessor grant a retroactive um, revaluation of, of, you know, an abatement in a, in a retroactive manner so that it, so if we give, money this year, but it doesn't all get spent and it sits in this account and somebody comes and says, well, for the last three years, I've been overbilled and I, I really should get an abatement for the last three years. That money might be available to pay for something like that. I don't know if the assessors are allowed to do that or if it's just for current year and going forward. So that's my first question. Um, so, oh. Yeah, go ahead. You're going to so, answer it. Um, you do have to file each year 
And the, the appeals typically get processed within the same year, but there are occasions where they might carry over for a couple of years. So it is, and then there's an opportunity to go to the appellate tax board, which is a state board to, to review or to appeal actions of, of the local board of, of um, the, the local board of assessors. So it's not, it's not typical. You can't today file for this year and, and two prior years. You had to have okay. in that year. But you might, you might have some kind of ongoing effort to get your taxes back that may last some time. And then you have to sort of claw back because you've been trying for a while to get the money. I, I understand that. So there is some logic behind once it's been appropriated to this account, it just sits in the account. It doesn't just fall back to free cash like a regular budget line. Um, so the, the other question I guess I had is, you know, are we compelled to, to you know, allocate money on any given year? Uh, can we just say this 500K, we're not gonna allocate that. Uh, we're not going to allocate anything this year because there's a there's a healthy balance. That's something we can do. Yeah, we actually checked with the Department of Revenue because I I had never the question had never come up and I've never had the occasion to potentially recommend not adding something each year. But the Department of Revenue has said that there is no requirement as long as you have a sufficient balance. There's no requirement on an annual basis to add to overlay. Great. And, and the other, and the final question is, does this behave like, like snowfall? Like some years we, we have to pay a lot of money to have the roads plowed and other years it's, it's very lean. We don't really have, you know, there's not that much salt spreading being done, et cetera. So is this the kind of account that varies, you know, greatly over time? So we, we um, revalue properties on every five years. And in the reval year, you typically see more uh, requests for abatement. But again, they're not necessarily granted, but you will see more applications, more people looking for abatements. And so this is something going into fiscal 23, we typically would add 500 is what we, what we have been doing in any given year. Going into fiscal 23, the reval year, we may increase it, or it, we typically would be looking to increase. Um, I wasn't proposing an increase because we already had a healthy balance. And I think, I th in my opinion, we have more than we need. So I don't think that we need to do both of those things. So we could either ask the assessors to release say a half a million dollars, or we could just not put that half a million dollars, set that aside for overlay. Thank you, Carrie, you've answered my question. Thank you. Uh, Eric? Yeah, you, you, you kind of touched on this with that last question from Dean. Is there any way to predict what is a sufficient amount or a sufficient balance based on performance in previous years? Well, um, I, I think, though, that, I mean, this, this is money that's controlled by the Board of Assessors, right? And so if, if they were asked, I mean, it's their question, if you will, you know, more so than it is ours or Carrie's, right? So if we were looking to this reserve to ask for it to be released, it would be up to them to figure out how much they felt that they could release. Is that fair to say, Carrie? Yes. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Eric? So it's not something that we determine, right? Understood, but I, I imagine it's it's a knowable number. We could look back on previous fiscal years and 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 find out what that number is. Could could I make a comment, Chris, having observed the Board of Assessors last year? Sure. So um, I think what Carrie's trying to tell us is that the time that you see the, the most volume of requests for abatements is when there's a revaluation year. Once the valuation of your home or your property is established, it's pretty much year to year, it's gonna be the same. So 
there's not a lot of volume. The, the, the households pretty much stay the same. What I observed was the applications were from where they had to make adjustments had to do with sales and transactions where properties were revalued based on um, some marketplace activity. So I think they have a pretty good handle on what, what they're gonna expect in any given year. Yeah. So I would expect, Eric, if, if we were to make this suggestion, they would come back with a rationale as to what they thought they needed based on whatever their history was. I'm just saying, I don't think we have that information ourselves. Okay. And, and, and one last thing, I have a question for, for Carrie. I, Carrie I, I have, I'm sorry, Kathy, there's some other people ahead of you. So I'll, I'll, I'm gonna come back to you, all right? Um, Brian. Hey, Carrie. Um, this is piggybacking on uh, the, the previous questions as well, but I, I'm curious to know, have we always allocated 500,000 during each uh, revaluation year, or has that number changed over time? Um, it, it has changed over time. I, I would say it maybe used to be closer to 400,000. It hasn't changed significantly. It's not like it, it five years ago, it was 150 and now it's a half million dollars. Uh, but the, the half million is, is the target that we've used for, for, you know, for the last five years or so. And so I guess what I, the underlying question is, there, there is this, to, to Chris's point, there's this sort of conversation that's happening between the Board of Assessors and the town to determine what the appropriate appropriation is going to be to the Board of Assessors, because once we release that cash, we don't have control of it or, of it anymore. So I'm so as we go into this new year, uh, this new revaluation year, 500,000 is the estimate, but that could, could theoretically change. Is that yeah, am I thinking right. about, am, am I, am I, The only purpose of us, just so guys, the only purpose of us talking about this, right, is the fact that there is a $3 million balance that's in a reserve that we could ask to be some, you know, some portion of it to be released to fund stabilization, right? So that's really the purpose of the discussion. The half a million, what you know, I don't know what the right number is for half a million. We it could have it could have a it may be we may be interested in that in our FY23 budget discussion as to whether it's needed or not. But the primary point on the page is the three million. The, but we don't have to ask for anything if we just don't appropriate the five hundred. We just we just yes. use that yes, for stabilization. Yes, that's correct. You so could we don't have to ask them. Uh, uh, well, let me ask a question, Carrie. Is the five hundred in guidelines or out? It, it's outside of guidelines, so it's not even in our our world theme. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's in the town manager's budget. It's somewhere. in the town manager's budget somewhere, right? But it's yep. outside of guidelines. Yep, it's outside of guidelines. Okay, um, Greg. Hey, just a quick question. When the 1.5 million was released, do you happen to know the balance at that given time of the account just to get a likelihood that they would release some? Yeah, it was, um, my recollection is it was between four and four and a half million dollars at that Thank time. Thank you. Uh, sure. So what, what happens if the entire 2.9 million is released? Can the balance go to zero? And what are the, and what are the consequences of it going to zero? So it, it can't go to zero because the, Minimum amount it could go to is what is outstanding in in any year that there's an outstanding uh, application. So okay. we would have to at least reserve the total value of what was outstanding. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Kathy. You're on mute, Kathy. Yeah. So, Carrie, if I understood this correctly, um, 
the town cannot just take this 500,000 and say, okay, we're not going to give it to the overlay. We're going to give it to um, a different account. It, it has to go to the overlay and then the assessors need to say, we can release it or we will release it for this purpose. Yeah, not, not on the 500,000. So the 500,000 is, um, is what is set aside in fiscal 23 for planning purposes. So it's, it, it hasn't gone to the, the Board of Assessors and the town could, the, the town manager in his budget could say, you know what, for fiscal 23, we're gonna put in a hundred thousand or two or set aside a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand or even zero based on the balance so that that is a um so the town manager could lower the amount but could he then put that money where we want it where we where we can use it yes so we could for plan okay. we could we could say it's zero but we're going to take that 500,000 and put it to the middle school stabilization fund. Okay, thank you. Amrith. Yeah, just to follow up on a um, question which Barasha asked half off, which was balance can't go to zero. You said that it has to be at least amount enough to pay for the outstanding claims. How much is that? I, I don't have that off the top of my head. Ball, ballpark kind of number. I'm, I'm just wondering, is that is that a small amount or a large amount? Because it seems like we're trying to use this as a mechanism to offset whatever the increase in the tax bills may be, but we already have a fairly substantial amount. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around why we would want to do this at this point. Be because you could use it to fund the stabilization reserve, Amrith. So it's, it's tax money that's already been collected, right? So it's collected, it's sitting in a reserve. Again, not one that it's controlled by the Board of Assessors. So could, in the past, they have released it for certain purposes. Should we ask them to release some of it to help fund the stabilization reserve? At the moment, we have 2 million. Mm -hmm. We'll go through this math in a minute, but I think you'll need to at least double that. That's the purpose. That's why we're talking about it. Okay, so I, I, in that case, I'm, I'll, I'll wait till we come to it, but I was looking at slide 10, which talks about the 5% minimum and the 10% maximum, which says- that, the That's free cash, that's free cash, right. Oh, okay, so that's-, that's free cash, that's, that's not for us. Thank yeah. you very much, okay, sorry about that. No problem, Mary? Um, I'm thinking that um, it would be a good recommendation for us to start with the 500K because that's under our control <clears throat> and then, and then but that doesn't preclude us from also asking the Board of Assessors to look at the 2.9 and say, what can they do to help us smooth this debt? So I don't think it's an either or, um, but I would definitely start with the 500K because again, that's under our control. We don't have to wait for the Board of Assessors to decide, but they may come back um, and later on and, and, and release some money to us. For the exercise we're doing tonight, I wouldn't count on them coming back, but I would, you know, put in the 500K. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Parisha. Yeah, thanks, Chris. So, so um, I have a similar suggestion to, to Mary, and uh, I think we should definitely ask Stephen and Carrie to take the 500K and not put it into the overlay account, put that in the stabilization fund, and then formally or informally ask the board for an estimate as to how much of the 2.9 can be used. Yes. And then I had a follow-up question. Uh, I'm assuming, because it certainly sounded like it from fiscal year 2017, the town meeting had to vote on this. So yes. I'm assuming that even if the Board of Assessors is conservative and says no, the town meeting could always approve a warrant that takes some of that money anyway, is that true? It's, it's not available for reappropriation unless the Board of Assessors release it. Oh, so they have veto power over this. Well, Even over town meeting? Right, so it's, it's already, 
it's not technically appropriated because this this account isn't appropriated, but for, for all intents and purposes, it's appropriated to the Board of Assessors for the purpose of funding tax abatements. And so they would need to release it, declare it surplus, and then it's available to the town to be reappropriated. It's very much like any other warrant article. Say that the, um, the middle school project, it's $100 million. Say the project is completed at, at um, $90 million. That $10 million, that authorization stays with that project until whoever was given control of that says this is surplus and releases it. So it's not, this is not any different than any other appropriate town meeting appropriation. Okay, thank you. Lois? Okay. You're on mute. Um, so Carrie, just so I understand this. Well, we're basically, this is kind of like an escrow, right? This is money, tax money that is attributable to these properties where there's an abatement challenge. And this is a way of making sure that if the abatement challenge is successful, if the, if the person looking for the reduction in their assessment prevails, they can make the refund. Is, is that what this money is? Yes. So it's, a, so it's like an escrow fund. So then what, how much you can dig into it really depends upon how much is needed to cover the claims. So I just wonder in a reevaluation year where um, I, I think we need to, to approach this with some caution because the Board of Assessors may have some very legitimate reasons for not wanting to, um, to dig deeply into this. Um, but, but it helps me now to understand what, what the function is. So thank you, Carrie. Kathy. Yeah, I think um, I just wanted to, to say to Lois, the, the balance builds up because not all of the abatements are granted. So, I mean, that's, that was my understanding. And, and I did hear them talking about the surplus and, and, you know, what was in their account and what they would do with it. And that's why they did the 150 um, last year for the senior means tax. It, it was a natural, um, a, a natural for their work. Okay. Um, but they do know that they have a, this reserve and that it builds up. Okay, yeah, that's helpful. Thanks, Kathy. Chris one, Chris, one last question. I'm sorry. So I understand there's a minimum that's required, but what happens if there? They, so what happens if the money runs out? In other words, they made a mistake in the estimate, or there was more abatement requests than money available. I, I'm kind of curious. What happens in that case? So this is this is the reason that the the Board of Assessors wants to have a sizable balance. So that doesn't happen. Um, I honestly, I, I would assume it goes, it would go back on, it would need to be raised on the following year's tax levy within the levy. I, I assume that would be the process. I've never seen that. It, it, would, it would be helpful, I think, just to get an understanding of what would happen because if we're asking them to do a projection, well, but we're not, asking, we're, not asking, we're not asking them for rejection. We're right. just asking right. them based on them their to look at knowledge. it, right? Based, right. We're not. We're, we're not, not telling, telling them, them the amount. We're I think uh, if I if I could comment, I think it's um just as it says on the slide, it's just like snow and ice. Uh, it would go into an overlay account that would have to be figured out in the following years, obviously, you know, you have to pay for it at, in the current year. Right, okay. Okay, so it's an idea, right? So it's an option that's out there. I like Parashara's suggestion that we, uh, in our own process, uh, 
suggest that the 500,000 for FY23 not be included this year um, and ask them to take a look at the balance to see if they think it could be declared surplus so that we could use some component of it to help fund the stabilization reserve to help take down the tax issue that's gonna happen in 26, 27, and 28. Okay, let's go on, Carrie. Okay, so the, the last option, and I have to apologize because I think I, I was overthinking this one based on past experience, but the last option is you can raise taxes to fund a stabilization fund. So you could, um, and there is a process, and this process really is designed for uh, communities that are at the levy limit, which is where I was overthinking this because the last time it, it came up, it was for a community that was at the, at the levy limit. We're not at the levy limit, so there's no, it's not an override. It's just an opportunity to, you could ask ask the community at, at town meeting, you know, do you want to raise taxes now to put into a stabilization fund? So when I was first thinking about this at the bottom of the slide, I, I was just thinking we are now paying off debt associated with school projects. We're seeing a reduction. Um, people are already being taxed at a certain level for the pro for these projects that have been previously approved. In fiscal 23, our exempt debt will, will be reduced by about $350,000. You could say, why don't we essentially recapture that? People are already paying at that level and that $350,000 could be a source of funds to go into the debt, stabiliza a debt a stabilization fund for the middle school. Um, or it could be any amount, or it could be the million dollars of free cash that we're proposing in 23 to reduce property taxes. Maybe that gets taken off the table and that million dollars of free cash instead goes into the middle school stabilization fund. Um, so those are, th that's just another opportunity. Hey, Chris, just a quick no question. I, th I think you, you threw out um, a number that I just want to try to understand. The, the, the stabilization fund, I think you had mentioned that the, the, the reality is we're probably going to need about $4 million in some type of stabilization fund. Um, so we would want to be collecting up to at least $4 million No, we have, two million. we have $2 we have million. Two, oh, that's right. We have $2 yeah. million. So we need yeah. another 2 to make it. I, well, we're going to talk about it. I, I think you might need three. I think you need two to three million more. Depends okay. on how depends on how much you want to soften the blow, right? So yep. we're going to. It depends on okay. how long you want to take it. Great, thanks. Yep. Anybody, else? Mary? Um, I like this last slide, and the way I think of this last slide is that when we were talking about our guideline, we made an assumption that at a two point seven percent guideline increase, we'd have a two and a half percent property tax increase. And we could bring that up to three. Mm -hmm. If we can hold the guideline, we could bring the property tax bill up to three and use that half a percent to establish something like this. And that way it, it talks to what you're talking about at, at the guideline meeting, Chris, you brought up the idea yep. of kind of smoothing out the property tax so that we kind of build up. And yep. that's, that's how I think it, that's where this would work. That, that's exactly what I was talking about was to right. was do something like that exactly um, to help help start building it up because the problem is you know if you need a significant amount we never know what happens with free cash every year you could have good years bad years so it's it's um, and if we know we need it which I think we do it would be great to start building it you know to recommend to to the town management and the select board that we start building that now uh, Parashar. So I apologize. I may have missed this. Um, and you may have addressed it at the beginning of the meeting or in past meetings, but can you, can someone help me understand 3 million, 4 million? Like how do we arise at that number? 
Yeah. Okay. And, let's and, let's uh, me, let's talk about that. So and, and well, let me. How do we yeah. arrive at that number? And also, like, what does that do? Because the yeah. tax increase yeah. is going to start in one year, and yeah, what does right. the bill going to go up? Because for me, that context, yeah, would be helpful to know and understand Absolutely. how yep. much to build up to. Yep. Okay. So, Carrie, can we go to some of those charts in the back? We can actually talk about that. The you, one that the interactive one. Uh, whatever the one is that actually shows uh, if you make these assumptions, this is what the debt comes down by. I can look oh, at slide that. 14. I don't have numbers on them, but. Yeah, it's, it's page 14 of, of the PDF. So this one, we can actually plug in numbers and you can see. Yeah, I, I use, I don't know what one I have. Can you make but that a little larger, Carrie, please? Another one. Another one. Yeah, you can use this one too. It's on there. So you want to show the top part. Yeah, there we go. So so let's so the the question on the debt term. So Parashar, there's two, there's kind of two big questions, I think. And so one is what's the size of the stabilization? And what can you do with debt term if you so desire? So at the top of the chart, there are, um, uh, you see on the debt term, there's an assumption. So we talked about 1,024 to the tax bill from the $100 million of middle school debt. That assumes a 20 year payback and a 4% coupon. What Kerry has done in this top financing assumption block has said, okay, you see the 1,024 in column G, if you change it to a 3% coupon rate, which is what uh, Peggy's question was, that lowers it by $89. So you go 1,024 minus 89. If you go to a 25 year term at a 4% rate, it changes it by $145. And if you go to a 30 year level, it reduces it by $223 or thereabouts. Back on the earlier charts, we had talked about the bump that you're trying to smooth is uh, $800, $600, $700. And so, what year? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. No, no, in, in what year, though? That, that bump started 26, in 27, 28, right? So right now, the debt, the component of the median tax bill that's excluded debt is about $810. In 26, it goes up to over $1,600. In okay, one so year. Starting in 26. In 26, right. So okay. 26, 27, 28 are the tough years, okay, on okay. the debt chart. So if you could build, so so you can see if you went to 30 years, it's a $222 hit. It's about a third of what you need, let's say, if you need six, seven hundred bucks, right? The if you had a uh I believe so if you if you the, that number there is a million six and it ends up to be 222. So if you had a $5 million stabilization reserve and you took it over three years, Parashar, that's about a million six a year. So that would give you another 222. So that yeah, brings yeah. you to about 450 down, right? That would be $450 down on a six or 700 growth. It takes you about halfway there. You have maybe another 75 bucks related to, if you go down to the cost saving assumptions, the middle school cost savings is 76 bucks. That's a bird in the hand, if you will. We think that's really gonna happen. So now you're up at around 500. Though, to me, those are the only real three things that we have that we can control the levers on. You can build up a stabilization reserve. You can extend the term of the debt. And obviously you can realize the savings of the, that the consolidated building. There may be other opportunities on this list, but I wanted us to focus on the ones that are sort of controllable, real, and impactful. And to me, those are the three that are there. There's a fourth one, which we'll discuss later, but that's that there may be something in ARPA. I'm not sure we're going to talk about that. But um, the ones that we could recommend that have an impact, I think, are debt term and stabilization reserve. So those are the those are the two I really want to talk about with you guys tonight, and see if you have, if you're comfortable making any recommendations on those. So, 
uh, I think let's talk about debt term. So, and I'm going to, let me just finish my comments and I'll open up for questions. So debt term, we normally, I say normally, historically, we've been at 20 years. The high school, they actually went to 25 years. So in the high school, there was an extension of the term. This is the largest single project Concord has ever done, right? There's no, there's no state money on this. So the 100 million is all coming out of our pocket. It's a school building that will last longer than 20 years, right? It is a school building that will be there for 30 years, I believe. So I don't think it's unfair to spread the debt over a longer period of time to a larger group of citizens, even though we would incur some additional interest expense for sure, it still has you know, a good savings amount and allows you to soften the blow in these three years when otherwise you'd, be, you'd really be pushing up the tax rate quite a bit. So I will, I will pause there. So let's talk about debt terms. So Chris, can I just summarize yep. what I think I heard just for my own benefit? Yep. Sure. So for three years, the impact will be about $1,000 extra. The impact will come down slightly because other debt's coming off the table. Yep, In essence, that's, that's right. what's going on. That's thank right. You. Okay, that's thank right. you. Uh, Greg. Yeah, do we have a, 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 a I'll, I'll call it a penalty of um, for going to a 30 year, like how much extra we're paying on top of the 20? You know, is it two million dollars in interest more? What what's the 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 amount there? I did not do my calculations previous. I should have, um, but that would be one thing to be interesting to know. I know, Carrie, if you've done any math on what the what the ten years in additional debt costs us. I do have it. So the the this is the interest cost on four, forty eight million dollars. Let's just make sure, yes. That's the interest cost on 20. I don't know, what, what are we looking at on the schedule? Yeah, numbers are so small, I can't. Yeah, you just, you know, <laughs> just don't tell us the answer. <laughs> the interest goes up from 48 to 71. Right. Okay. So $23 million. Okay. $23 million buys you an extra 10 years, yep. ballpark two and, right. two, and a, two and a third. A year. Right. And it gives you some capacity. So remember, there's a uh, combined public safety building that wants to come, right? The, the people are looking for, are you going to wait 20 years to put that up? Or are you going to try and create some room by spreading out the the middle school, right? So that's the other question, right? Thinking about the, the, uh, the capacity and when you need other buildings. So this is about, I anyway, go ahead, you guys, let's see, Dean. Um, so the, the thing that we really have decided against for reasons that are not obvious, but we have, is using the standard uh, debt schedule that we've used for all other long-term projects like Alcott and all the elementary schools, which is a declining balance model where every year you're, you're paying a fixed amount of principal every year. It means in the early years, you're paying a ton of, of uh, interest, but every year you're paying less. And that's how we're getting some of this headroom, which would give us room to build a, a, a public safety building or something. But if we go with a level debt, it, then, then, then our exempt debt is just gonna be flat and there is gonna be no place where we're growing some capacity to take on more things. So having, cho you know, having chosen this flat, you know, the flat payment model, uh, we're giving up some capacity in the future to, to you know, build room to build, to do other things. So we're losing that. that that's all, that's my comment. I, so we, I, you know, we, we really didn't evaluate that here because on a flat payment model, you don't see the big ramp up that then starts to go down. And it is, it is, it's, it's probably worse, but I don't know what the number is. That, that would be nice to just know what it is that we are avoiding, the, you know, the, the, the real peak that you would get with- Yeah, the so it, up front. it would be, it would be higher in the front. Is that what yes, you're saying? Yes, it would. Yeah, it yeah, would be pay, yeah. more painful up in the front, but, right. it, it, but after you get to the peak, you're now, you're now building every year capacity to take on other projects. Yeah. You know. I, don't, I don't know, Carrie, um, 
do you have an answer for Dean? Is it, was there a particular reason? Again, probably because it was even worse. Yeah, <laughs> it's even worse than the early years. You know, obviously, you're, you're looking <laughs> near term. Yeah, near term, right? You're looking. You're looking right. You're looking short term. When we're talking about a thirty-year piece of debt, maybe we want to look a little bit longer and say, okay, well, how do we get through this pain, uh, and, and so that we can afford other things later. Because otherwise, we're just going to fix this thing right in there, and there's it doesn't build, it doesn't slow down. No, it doesn't. It Harry, the, is that something that you ever you looked at? Yeah. So I don't know if you can see this, but the, this is showing the twenty year uh, equal. Get my nose in here. There it is. <laughs> it, okay. So it's two hundred bucks more. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you add about two hundred bucks to the bill. Well, two hundred bucks, but then look what you what's happening. Every year you're 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 getting another you know hundred hundred plus or something in yep. capacity to uh, yep. do other things as you as it goes out. Well, That's again, not- so you could you could you could do that, and maybe that maybe that gives us a better answer. Um, I guess uh, the question would be, you'd need more stabilization. Well, I guess the question is how much do you want to bump the tax bill, right? So I don't know that you're going to be able to get more than 5 million in stabilization. So Carrie, can you just show that that chart again, just so I see it again? Um, Okay, so we are back to 1024 in like year seven or something, year eight, you're you're at 1029. What year is that? 31, I don't know, year eight, something like that. I don't know, it takes a while to get to get yeah. to where the level payment would go and then everything is gravy after that. I don't know. Well, you're it's, starting at 800, right? Well, not only that, but it's 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 about $29 less each year. I don't know if that's a big amount, frankly. Yeah, yeah. Over 20 years it is, is what, you know, what Dean is saying, right? Well, it, the what we're seeing now as Alcott and Willard and, and those are rolling off is we're seeing 100 plus per year um, because that's how I was thinking you could shift the salt shed by just two years. And, and, th- and then you all of a sudden have room to do the salt shed. You know, it's just, you know, it's just, you know, I don't know. They, are, they, are, they do appear to be small numbers as you're going out, but you do over, you know, after a certain number of years, you're beyond the, where the 1,024 that we're going to be at for 30, for 20 or whatever that the number was. So, yeah. Okay, well, I, I I hear you. In the early years, it's it's bad. It's worse. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, I, I just have a real quick question to Carrie. You know, um, as you we think about these long term projects, um, the the thirty year, you know, proposal that or idea that Chris had mentioned resonates, and I'm I'm just curious to know in our previous debt, you know, in our previous projects, have we ever re- refinanced or renegotiated debt? Um, throughout the course and sort of strategically thought about that because, um, you know, that, that might be something we would be able to do here or, or no. Uh, so for the elementary school projects, we have refinanced each of those at least once or twice o- over the term. Yeah, I think that's a really good question because that's one of the things that I was thinking about. We're really solving for a kind of a three year, a three or four year problem. And, right, right. Um, and if there was a way to go out with 30 year and then once we were over the hump and then you refinance back down to 25, back down to 20, 20. that, that right. would be ideal. I, I don't know the I don't know the opportunity for that, but for me, that makes sense. Or even if you couldn't refi, Brian. You could start prepaying just like a mortgage, right? Yeah. Could, could we prepay exactly. so that we could, you know, you you would bring these pay, you'd bring the interest impact down. It would it wouldn't be 23 million. It would be a lot less than that, but it would get us over the hump. And and this is a question, Carrie, as well for the financial advisors, right? So uh, I'm not, you know, a muni bond expert or you know, so somebody this is a good problem to ask them to say, this is our problem, right? We have a three-year window. Where it's it's very painful. We don't have this other debt coming down for three or four years. What? How might we structure this in a way that you know would would perhaps alleviate the problem without this extension of the term to thirty years? I don't know. Yeah. So I I'm happy to ask him that. The standard call provision 
in a 20 year bond would be in year 10. And so a call provision any sooner than that would likely result in an interest rate that was higher, but I don't know how much. Yep. So I could ask him to potentially model with a five year call. And, you know, we could take a, a look at that as well. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. <laughs> Uh, here. Ray. Yeah, I, I like Dean's suggestion about a uh, a fixed principal payment each year, even though it does, you know, drive the expenses to the early period. And can that be? And what would the calculation be if you offset that with a say a thirty-year term with you know level principal, um, and then look for you said refinancing out ten years. Okay, D. Yeah, Carrie, can you tell me on the pages that you were showing us before with the with the numbers and the payments, were you using a 4% or a 3% interest? So all, I believe all of these are 4%. Those are 4%. Do you have any that show a 3%? I think you said earlier that you thought in the next couple of years that a 3% would be a very reasonable um, amount. So I'm just wondering if you have any of those charts that tell us those numbers. Yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't look like I have that in here, but on this line that's highlighted at 20 years, a 3% would save right. $8 at median. Okay. And do you, uh, with your advisors, do you, would you also talk with them about the differences just from the standpoint of municipal funding, 25 versus 30 years? Because I don't think we've ever bonded anything for 30 years. And I know that after 10, you'll probably go back, but um, have you had any experience with the 30 year bonding versus the 25? Um, I've not been involved in a project that was bonded for 30 years, uh, but that that is something that's the maximum term that is allowed for uh, school projects in Massachusetts. And there, okay. there for sure are communities that are bonding school projects for 30 years. It's just not something that we've done here. The, I think somebody said earlier, the high school is at 25 years. Correct. All of our elementary schools are at 20 years. Okay, thank you. Greg? Christine, can we switch to doing the stabilization fund? And that might help us answer some of these questions by knowing, you know, oh, we can get a stabilization fund of this, and then it can help offset years, you know, three, four, five by this, yes. right? We're attacking it from the other way right now. Right. So yeah, so the I don't know, Carrie, if you have any math on that. Is it in? Yeah, okay. So you see, uh, you had an assumption of what over three years? Yeah, there it is. So if it was five million for three years, it's a million six or two twenty two. So it's the same size as the thirty year extension. So the impact is also about two hundred and twenty two dollars, Greg. But can we, can we, is 5 million a number that we can actually get and achieve? That, that's what I, like, that's what I meant. Like, we don't know. <laughs> okay, so well, here's, here's the deal, right? So here we have 2 million now, right? And, and we're going to budget for 23. You have 23, 24, 25, and then you have a problem, right? So 26, right. 27, 28, you got a big debt hit. So you have three years to get to 5 million. So you tell me, you could do... A million a year, you could take the number, you could ask the Board of Assessors for money, you could, you could increase the tax rate a million dollars a year, 23, 24, 25, and build it that way. So there, there isn't a set answer, but it gets you a pretty good impact. So at 5 million, you get $222 a year off the, you know, you can, in that three year period that you'd use it in, so you build it up to 26. Yeah. You use it in those three years. What, what I was getting at is, do we want to save five million, and we're going to ask the taxpayer for this, right? Do we want to firm that up of what we're going to make that number? 
and how we're going to get to that number and then come back to this, right? Sure, we can. Other people want to do that? I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. I think, Great. I, uh, I, th I think I think it would be a, I think we can probably make a little bit of progress here about how do we get from two to five million, okay, and yeah. and then you know we'll get some momentum and then we'll come back and okay. see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about momentum. At eight, four, at eight, uh, I know you are. Yes. Yeah. Eight forty at night. So okay. Okay. So how all do right. we get three so, million more? There you okay. go. Okay. So do people still need their hands up, or are we on a new topic? I I, I do have a. a question. Okay, yeah, One of ahead. the comments that was made was, well, what if we just go with the level payment strategy and start to prepay our principal? Is that a thing in municipal bond finance that you can just have a return of principal and the bondholder who's expecting an income stream is just getting his principal back? Is that is that a thing? Are you allowed to do that with a bond, with a municipal bond? Carrie, you got any answer there? I made a note to, to, uh, that I to follow up with our financial advisor because i'm not sure that we can prepay yeah exactly i, I don't we think could, so. we could put it into the stabilization fund and then when we refinanced we could pay down principal yeah that's another yeah we could just sort of pay ourselves so to speak by by taking the money and just putting it aside and waiting for an opportunity to pre up to refinance you're right okay okay thanks okay that, good yeah all right yeah. So the the stabilization reserve. So again, the only so I was just doing math, right? So it depends upon. So let's start out with how much do you want to lower the tax impact? So if it if your tax bill, if the tax bill is going to go up by net of the other reductions, it's going to go from uh, you know 800 up to 1600, right? If it's 800 now, it's gonna be 1600 in 2026. So that bump, how much do you wanna take? So- You wanna level it? What, I, I'll give you one idea. And this yeah. is based off of Parashar, the, the work that you did on the, on the, uh, for the guidelines. If you took the 810 that's currently in the excluded debt component of the median tax bill and you catered it at 3%, it, it the most you get to is something like uh, you know 900 950 something like that. So if you, in other words, you have to sort of figure out what do you think a normal increase in the debt could be. I was just trying to come up with a way to do it. Anyway, it doesn't come anywhere near where we're going to end up, which is 1600, 1500, 1400. It's a lot higher than where you would normally be. So. That's the question, is how, how low do you want it to be? How much of that peak do you want to take off in 26, 27, and 28? And then that will tell you how much of a stabilization reserve you need. So that, that's kind of the way to do it. So Chris, I, I was coming at it from a slightly different perspective. Let me put this on the table. Yep. The last, the last couple of years, we've used a million in free cash for housing. For housing? And I'm assuming- no, I mean, that's that's What do you mean for housing? Affordable? 500. Housing. Affordable housing. 500. 500. What, what was it, 500? Yeah, 500. Yeah, for year. Okay, fair enough. So let's make for it 500. Year. Yeah. And I'm assuming we have 2 million in the stabilization fund now. We, we have do. to build yep. up another 3 million over three yep. years. Yes. Right? So we have to find a million a year. Yep. 500,000 from the uh, affordable housing and then we just talked about how the practice has been 500,000 for the overlay account. If we go with an assumption that every year between now and three years, we're gonna take a million dollars, 500 from free cash and 500 from the overlay, not put it into the overlay for the next three years. Doesn't that get us to 5 million by the end of the three years? It would, you just need a million a year. But you have, you know, you have to be able to do it, right? You well, have to have the I free cash so to do it. You're right, and here's where I'm coming from. You have from. to have so the free cash. So you almost make it. So you almost make it a mandatory requirement when the town is building up the budget. First things first, take a million, put it aside, and then everything else you've got left over, you you plan accordingly. Would you be raising the tax rate to do that or just assuming it comes out of free cash? It, I would be assuming it comes out of free cash and you're just building it up that way for the next three what years. What if you don't have free cash? What if we don't get it? 
you, there's a trade-off in services. I mean, it's $500,000. You can't bind future town meetings or future committees. I'm not buying, I'm, I understand that. I understand that, Mary. I'm just saying we establish a principle at least for 23 mm. with the hope yeah. and expectation that most of us are gonna be on for the next few years and we just carry that forward. Okay, that's an idea. Uh, Greg, with your hand up still? Yeah, sorry. Um, going to option, I think Carrie had option number four, which was as the debt decreases, we just tax again and, and sort of keep that money around to fund the stabilization fund. To yes. me, that seems kind of weird because we're taking off 1 million for you know alleviating property taxes. And then we're sort of tacking back on you know some amount of money to put into the stabilization fund. Yep. But was the whole purpose of that exactly what you just said, Christine, was you can't assume that that 1 million is always going to be there for free cash to potentially put into? Uh, it helps you because it's, it's, a, it's money that you know you have, right? right. So, or you could, so, you could cause to have, right? By, by, by not giving it back, uh, by not giving back the deduction in the debt, yeah. Right, so one way to also smooth out is we can slowly start to increase, you know, so we have a stabilization fund bringing down the tail and we slowly bring up the, you know, the beginning of it, right? 22 and 23 and 24, right? By, by that means, right? Good. Carrie, do you know how much that gets us? So if it's 350 for FY23, how, did you add it up for what it is in the next three years, 23, 24, 25? I didn't, I didn't look at the total, what that adds up to. Yeah, I did, I did not, but in 24, I believe it's close to a half million. Okay. And, um, you know, a safe assumption for, for 25 half million also. So, so you might get a million and a half out of that over three years. And that, that's not touching our, our million that we put away each year to free cash. Right. Right. right, that's right, that's right. So you get a million and a half that way. So again, it's half of what we need if you need 5 million. Right, and then and then potentially, you know, no guarantee, but we could use that million that we keep giving to alleviate the tax burden into a stabilization fund as well, right? If you do, the tax rate goes up, so you're, you're right. But it's it's leveling off the beat, sort of. It's starting to bring up the beginning and lowering the backside, right? That's what we're trying yes. to achieve, right? Yes, yes, you could, you could, you could, you could, which is one way to do it, right? Yeah. it's it's a way to sort of start. Unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, you know, you're, you're going to bump up the tax rate to create stabilization and you're going to kind of sort of level load it over time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah right. exactly. Yes, you could do that. Okay. Looks like Ray. Yeah, I agree with Craig, basically. It's, I mean, you did say smoothing the tax burden, not uh, taking it away. So if you, if you can raise it earlier, you can reduce the, the peak. Yep, that's one way to do it. And that's what Mary was talking about earlier right, as well. Right. So when when we're talking about you know the end tax rate, so and I don't I haven't done the math to see what it gets you if we left it at three percent, even though the guideline would be lower and the gap that we'd be adding would go to would be tagged for stabilization. I don't know how much that gets you, but I think that that's worth looking at you know, do the math on that and figure out how much it gets you. So between the, the two, if you kept the debt reduction, hit it into stabilization, and you also started to raise the overall rate a little bit to build stabilization, we might get close to what we need. Right, by moving some of the money out of, by not taking money out of free cash to lower the tax rate. Right, essentially. Something less than a million, maybe, maybe nothing, than, maybe, maybe part of it. Yeah, you can, or you can, you can do it either way you want, right? You can, yes, essentially that's it. Yep, that's essentially it. Dean. Um, simple question. You know, if we were to go with this strategy, which I, I think is, is perfectly fine, we smooth, we smooth the, the ramp up by increasing taxes in the, in the very early years. Uh, and we're just sort of putting that, salting that money away. I'm totally fine with that. My question would be, uh, what's our total levy capacity? Uh, is it like four million or something? I've yeah. forgotten what the number is. It's we're we're um, 
uh, we're above that now. I think we're we're north of we're 5.1 million right now. 5.1. Yep. So we we have the capacity to raise uh, taxes in the early years at the three million dollar level that we're looking for. Um, without really getting into our into our you know a, a true override, we can yep. we can just do it. Right, um, we have the room right now. Yep, we, we have do. the room to do it. Yep, and we do. and uh, yeah, I mean that so it, just so it brings the pain. It brings the pain earlier, but it smooths it out, and it doesn't go quite yep. so high. It, it does. And, like it's going to right, it does. But just just remember, it gets you depends on how much you want. So that gets you, let's say, two hundred and thirty dollars off the hit. Yeah. $5 million gets you $230 off the hit in 26, 27, and 28. It's not enough. It's not enough. Not so enough. you, you, so that's why I think that's why I, I put the debt term on the table as well. Yeah. Yep. Because it's not enough. I, I don't think we can raise 10 million in stabilization, which is what right. We, it's kind of, you know. Christine, Mary, what do you call is enough then? What, what's the data behind? Is it just a feeling? Is it? Is it? You no, want it's to not a feeling. It's no, man. No, 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 it's, it's man. I think. I think the question that Chris asked us earlier, which is, we're going from eight hundred to sixteen hundred. Right. So how how you know how much do we want to shave off that sixteen hundred? Right. Right. right now oh. we're at we we shaved off what two thirty if we if we increase the stabilization fund from two to th to five million. Right. It's about we two hundred thirty bucks. Right. We got two hundred thirty off of that sixteen hundred, and in my opinion. 230 isn't getting us close enough to the 800. Not that I'm saying we should go to 800. Of right. course. Yeah. I was okay, thinking, that's what I was, that's yeah, I was sort of in my head, I was saying a thousand. I was saying, okay, if we're at eight, eight something now, let's say you said, I don't want to go above a thousand. So if I, if I'm hitting 1600 in 26, I need 600 bucks. I need 600 bucks. So I just, we've got 220, 230 on the table. The middle school savings adds another 75. So now you're at 300. So your 600 you, becomes 300. Didn't you just get 233 from the $5 million also? Am I missing something? No, the, the, well, I, I'm leaving debt, off, debt term off the table, Parashar. Oh, God. I'm it. just saying what, what we just talked about was the, was the, the reserve. You have the middle school savings, which is about 75. So you got 300 bucks. And then the question is, you want to do more? And the only thing I see that's obvious on the table is extending the term. Well, uh, Chris, if you uh, increase the, the tax burden early, that seems to have a better alignment with the decision to build a school. I mean, people are committed to the school. And so you bring the cost nearer to the decision to build the school. And I think it's... Um, now it feels more, I don't know what, more aligned with the, with the commitment. Am I making sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So you're saying raise it above three, go up to four or 5% and tag that to stabilization and then feed it across. Right. Yeah, rather than, rather than you know, saying, let, let somebody else pay for it in the future, let's bring it closer to the decision to build a school. Yeah. Uh, it, it limits your- A little bit. Just, just so you understand, though, you only have three years to do that. Right. So no, I understand. You're going right. to have to have a pretty big hit in those years. So that that's the thing. Right. It's that's not a total solution. It's just a it's a. Um, no, I, yeah, no, I, it, your logic makes sense. an influence. Yes, yeah, it does. Uh, Peggy. Um, I just want to remind everyone we're only talking about the capital budget which is a pretty small part of the overall tax bill. Right. So we're kind of digging in and killing ourselves over that. Um, and, uh, well, mainly that, that's my point. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> Peg, we're killing ourselves because it's a big hit. We're just digging in and killing yeah. ourselves. Yeah, great. Okay, Peg. <laughs> So Christine, if we stay at the four, you know, looking at the chart, if we stay at the, the 20 or 4%, right, we were, the high was in 26 at 1600. And then we leveled out at about 1200, correct? If we yeah, stay somewhere there, around there. Yep. Right? Yeah, that sounds right. Right. Yeah. If we use the, the numbers that you were coming up with before about 300 off of the top, right, that stabilization would then bring us level to, be, to what sort of the long term with the capital plans would be. 
right? Without it, without increasing the term. Yeah, well, you, you got years. 300, right? So you're at 1600, so you're at 1300. Yeah, and then the the longer, all oh, right, so we'd have to go down like another 90 something dollars to get to what, right? Yep. We're, we're, we're getting closer toward what long you term are. would be in you that are. point without stretching out the debt to 30 years and that increased okay. penalty of 23. So, well, okay, that's a good question. So are most people uh, opposed to stretching the debt term? Let's take us, uh, if we just have a, a show of hands on asking for a vote, I'm just trying to see where, what the, you know, the, the committee sort of feels like. People who are you are, stretching it? Are you stretching it to 30 years, to 25 years? Uh, I'm gonna, I'll do it, uh, let's say 30 first, okay? So people who like the idea of stretching to 30, can you raise your hand? Uh, sorry, people who like it or people who don't mind it? <laughs> Amrit, come I don't on. Mind it. Work with me here. I don't mind it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so five people are that. What about same question for 25 years? People who would, okay, so I've got, you know, 25 well, I, is okay I, with me sure. too. I'm in for 30. I'm, I'm in for 30. 30 yeah. 25, right? One, two, three. Yeah, well, but the converse is no, the more. I, I think, but, but I think the, the, the is the conversation really between are we going to do twenty or are we going to do thirty? Because mm -hmm. the real significant value that we're we're talking about is putting a lot of money on the table. That's going to be the thirty year. It's not going to be the twenty five year. So we should probably just, you know, take that off the table and let's just talk brass tacks about mm -hmm. do we keep it as is or do we do the thirty? Right. Well, I think no, that's if we're talking cool. about shaving the tax bill, we get a shave on the tax bill from going from 20 to 25. But we, we don't. Do. It's not that but, much, but it, though. It's not yeah, that and, much. That's, and that, that's only my point, Mary. It's, it's just, uh, I, it's I don't like necessarily think it has right? the, yeah, it it's has about the impact bucks that we less. want. Yeah. yeah. It's what? It, it does, it, $80. It's dollars less or so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's still. Does that change your mind, Mary? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, there's a total tax bill and there's a tax rate, and they're just going to be different. And I also think the four percent is extremely conservative. So, and and I the the other question I had, and I, I appreciated um, Ray's comment about you know we, we should try to align this more up front and have yeah. folks absorb you know more of the tax hit up front. But I think maybe, and I don't know what this is, and I would need um, Carrie. It's some help, some hand holding here, maybe with the advisor. It's the way I'm kind of thinking about this is we do incur that hit up front, but then we actually start off with this 30 year. And then we, if it's a 10 year call, then we refi to down. I don't know if we can refi back to 20, right? And so mm -hmm. what we're, yeah. and, and so if, if that's possible, we're talking about a refinancing as quickly as, you know, to get through these hard lean years, figure out what that actually is, have the advisor come back to us and give us some more information and then make a determination on how we can use a combination of both, because we're not going to get there. We have to have some combination of this. It's not going to be able, yeah. we can't do it separately. No, so, so, can I, I just, can well, I, hold on, hold on. I just want to pull us back for a second. So, yeah, um, we don't need to solve this, right? So these, these 15 people sitting here don't need to solve it. What we, what we do need to do, I think, is to make some recommendations of, of what we think, perhaps in order of priority, should be considered in order to reduce the, the, the hit. And I think that's really, we, we don't need to solve it tonight. We don't need to do all the math, right? It's not, it's not up to us to dictate it, but I think we, we, we need to make suggestions to the town and to the select board to say, this is what we think you should look at, okay? So I, I, we don't need to go all the way down the rabbit hole to get the answer for this one or that one. So why don't we just come back and let's talk about, so we've talked about just about everything except for one more thing I'm gonna put on the table. So one, there's one, one more item that's really more a, a question, but it's still out there. And so it, it's something that uh, could be explored. And so there is ARPA money for the town and there's also ESSER money for the schools. Um, in my cursory uh, looking at, at the requirements of how the eligibility for spending under those two plans, um, it, it, uh, there are, there's, it's unclear whether it could be used for this. Yeah, thank you, Carrie, for putting the, the, the picture up. The one thing that I was very focused on was whether you could use lost revenue, and I use lost revenue, but I went in and looked at that. It's a pretty complex formula. 
Obviously, we did lose revenue, but the use of that revenue is for government services, uh, which would include education, but don't necessarily include capital spending. So it's unclear to me that we could use this money to offset the building. However, there is discussion about um, uh, using it for uh, water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. Perhaps are there elements, other elements that could be considered? It's very new, right? So people, I think, are still looking through it to see what's possible. So it could be that potentially some of that money could be used to, to bring the cost of the building down. I don't know. Given that it's early days on how ARPA can be used, I don't think it's a bad idea to sort of put that on the list and say, you know, make sure uh, folks look at that to make sure it, 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 if there's some opportunity, maybe for the, you know, paying for solar, is there something in there in sustainability? There's, there is language in there that talks about um, ventilation that can be used to reduce virus spreads. It's a question really of are there eligible uses in the cost of the middle school that could be upset by this? I don't know. I think it'll take a little time to figure that out, but it's something that could be looked at. So um, you, can, you can take that down, Carrie, but I just wanted to raise that as that's, that's also something that could be out there, but I don't know enough about it nor do I think the town knows enough about it to say, yes, that's something we can count in terms of making a, you know, make, you know, seeing it, uh, the debt come down. I like things that are in front of me that are controllable and I can see the math on. So, but, uh, but ARPA is a potential. So those are the, those are the, the four uh, potential items. So the question for us is what ones do we think make sense? Would we like to prioritize for others to say, pursue this, as a way to bring the tax impact down. So, uh, so I will open it for discussion now. And let's stay at that level, okay? What, what do you think the priority is of the things that we talked about tonight? Greg. All right, so I'll, I'll get it rolling. Can I make a motion on uh, the, the priority of the, the, bit, um, the tax assessor to write a note to him asking him to take a look at the reserves, him or her, I apologize, uh, to take a look at the reserves and come back with a recommendation of if they can release anything. Okay, so uh, I, I guess um, before we do a motion, can we can we just maybe go around a little bit and see if we can get consensus on the priority, Greg? Is that okay? is that all right? So I like that. So that's definitely an item. Is and I, I like what Parashar said earlier, which is we would like to avoid adding five hundred thousand to the FY twenty three reserve. And that's something we would, we would ask of the town manager and that we would ask the board of assessors to look to see if it's possible for them to release some of that 2.9 million for purposes of adding to the stabilization reserve. So people like that idea. I think they do. I'm gonna put that on our list. So that's one item on the list, which is the um, board of assessors item. Okay. Another item on the list, Mary. Um, I'm, I'm thinking we could ask for at least 500K from free cash. Okay. That's the first thing. And the second thing I have would be the override for the stabilization. But before I come up with an amount for that, I'd like to ask Carrie, if, if the tax rate went up from 2.5 to three, how much does that give us as far as um, the amount that we could put in an override stabilization fund? Carrie, is that an easy question? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, so. Okay, you, maybe she can do that in the background while we're still talking. So so those, just, those are my two ideas. So let me just make sure I have that right, Mary, so everybody understands. So we would ask for additional 500K in free cash to go to debt stabilization for FY23. Right. And we would also look to um, take that $350,000 reduction in debt service into uh, the debt instead of letting it flow through the tax bill, we would actually ask to put that into debt, into debt, uh, debt stabilization. Is that, is that correct? Is that what you meant? No, what 350? No. The 350 is the amount that, that Carrie mentioned on the slide, that if you looked at the existing debt that's yeah. coming down, the, I think- No, the no, we're, no, okay. I was asking a different thing. I was saying okay. my second night thing was what we've already talked about, which is the possibility of a debt stabilization override, right? The very last, and, I, 
what's the override for? Well, I think you have to have a two thirds vote in order to make that. I think happen. you guys are talking about the same thing. Okay, maybe we are because yeah. maybe we are. Yeah, <laughs> if we are, then the then the amount is three hundred fifty thousand in the. In is it? The yes. Okay, I didn't know that. Fine. Yeah. Am I right, Carrie? So sorry, I was calculating to make if if we went up to three percent, it's about six hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Okay, that's a different thing. Okay. <laughs> If that's yep. what you're asking, if the tax, if the property tax. No, that's what Mary was asking initially. That's good to yes, know. That's... I was actually talking about something else. So Mary, okay. that's not the same thing you were talking about, right? Or is I, it? I, I don't know. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the, first the idea, Mary. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was talking, okay, let okay. me back up. Let me slow okay. down. The My idea first... of going to 3% yes. and creating a stable, that which which Carrie has told us would be six hundred and twenty thousand. Is that's that my, what you were talking about? That's my second idea. Oh, yes. oh, okay. Okay. Now I'm, I'm with. I'm now done. I'm with. Okay. Now I understand. Okay. So that's another. That's so. There's two more ideas. They are on the list. Parashar. So I'm going to get. A, I'm going to try to seek a clarification between the six hundred thousand and the three seventy five. Bear with me. Yep. If we don't go to three percent. And we go with the two and a half or whatever it was that we talked about last week. Right. I think that implicitly assumes, Carrie, correct me if I'm wrong, because the debt service is declining by $375,000 next year, that we would be taking the 375 in debt service and putting it towards other uses in the operating fund. Is that what was going on last year or for last week when we were talking about the 375? No. I think I'm following you and I and if I am the answer is yes. Okay, thank you. So Mary, let me Wait, try to explain. That, that, that money yes, just goes yes. away. It, you don't reclaim. That's right. It, it goes away. We're it goes not... away. We don't we don't get it to put it anywhere else. It go oh. it's gone. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I was not following your question. <laughs> oh. uh, me, okay. okay. All right, Parish, I'll try again. Let me try again. If we want to cap, if we want to keep that 375, right? What is the tax rate that we have to be at? So that it's 350,000. 350. And that, if if that goes away, it reduces the tax impact by about four tenths of one percent. So when we presented the numbers last week. Yeah. What was the tax rate that you were starting with? Right. So we, last week, I just want to make sure. So that was 2.6%. I'm sorry, how much? 2.46%. Okay. That's what your guideline was. Okay. That's just on within the levy. Yep. The exempt debt is going down by three hundred and fifty-three thousand, so that's that's down by 038 percent. So the effective rate is two point zero eight percent. Okay, and so what would that rate look like if we wanted to keep it at three fifty? Keep, keep the three fifty. So then we would be back to two point four six overall. Okay, thank you. So it sounds as if if we, if we stick with 2.46, we'd get the 350. Yep. And then if we go to three, you'd get another 600,000. Is that what's going on? Uh, yes. I, yes. Is it another? Are they additive, Perry, or they or is the 620 include the 350? So the um, the the 620 was to go from 2.46 to. Three okay. percent. So they are added. They are added. So that's so that would be, So that's good. So that would be a million or thereabouts. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. So so yeah. what I would favor, I'm not sure I favor going to three, <laughs> but I would favor keeping <laughs> know, the three fifty is my point is what I wanted to say. Yeah. Number one. Uh, and then number two, I like the idea of the five hundred thousand. That's what I was suggesting before. I would make it a million, but that's five hundred is fine. And then from where, Prashad, from, from, from free, free cash. cash. 
Okay, just just clarifying. Thank you. Yeah, no, I would make it a million for free okay. cash, but that's why I'm fa I'm fine with five hundred. Okay. And then I I would actually prioritize the refinancing to go to thirty years on top of that. Okay. All right. Thank you for Good. bearing with me. Good. No, D. Yeah. Um. The question that I have when you were talking about the ARPA money and you yeah. were looking at it in how the school could use it for the for the new middle school. Yes. yes. Why not look at it in terms of if that money is there and infrastructure, the bottom one was one of the things listed, why don't we start looking at or trying to find out from the town manager, how could the ARPA funds be used that would now be used for infrastructure so that it would then reduce the um, capital that he would need, which then that money could go into um, from his budget. He wouldn't need as much money in his capital, his item one or whatever you want to call it, tier one fund, and that that money could go into um, our free cash that then goes into yeah. the stabilization fund. Yeah, I, I don't think it, it can work that way, but I understand Why? exactly what you're saying. Uh, yeah. because it doesn't, ARPA doesn't allow you to create financial reserves directly or indirectly. However, if, if, but, but it can be used for infrastructure. So it's a fair question, D. So I think we should put that on the list. I think, yeah. we, I don't, I think it's all evolving. So I can't, you know, I, I'm no expert on it and I don't think anybody is an expert yet, but I think it's a good question to see if, if in fact we could get an indirect benefit that way. I, I don't think you can, but it's a good question. So I think we should put it on a list. Okay, good. Good. Um, Amrith. So just a clarification maybe. Um, the specific things which everyone's recommending is where to get specific, you know, where do we get money from this account or the other account? Maybe what I'm gonna propose is not what you're looking for. So let me try. If you were to go to a 30-year bond at the target interest rate, and you were to just sum up what you're going to have to pay over the next 10 years and average it out, it comes to about 1250 bucks per year. On the bottom line of this placeholder amount, in other words, over 10 years, you'd have to pay 12500 Can we make a recommendation to whoever to say, the difference between 12500 and that number which you have there, consider, high, consider raising that in 23, 24, and so on, towards whatever you're gonna need in the years where there's a peak. And set the 1250 as the target we expect to spend on large capital projects moving forward. Because the thing I'm scared about is, today we know of these projects, tomorrow there's gonna to be another large capital project which is not on this list. Yeah. And then what are you gonna do? And where's the money for that? Gonna Rather than having this mm -hmm. conversation, each time we have one of these projects, because there is going to be one more, there may be another, whatever building, maybe not $100 million worth. But yep. can we establish a guideline which says, we now have tier one, tier two, tier three projects. We are going to anticipate that the expense which these projects in tier one, tier two, and tier three are going to be on a per year on a tax bill are going to be 1250 something and something. And then you will carve it up any which way you want. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the money for that, then we have the conversation. Otherwise, we have it set aside in a stabilization fund somewhere already. Yep, so I, I can make the stabilization yep. fund for the salt shed right now. You could. <laughs> well, again, you're, you're going to have to raise taxes to get there somehow. But yes, you could. I, I don't think that's a bad idea. I think that's an interesting way to come at it. Uh, Parashar. You're on mute. So I was just gonna say what I know about the ARPA funding and maybe the first thing to check is the timing of this. Yeah. So even on the infrastructure spend. Yeah. You know, if the spend is to, to be obligated by the end of 24. Yeah, and if so, if our spending and building isn't gonna to start till 26. Well, you know, the, the spending is gonna start before then, the building's gonna go in line then. So uh, it's, it's a fair point though. It's not yeah. gonna be easy to do. So, that, so again, my, that's my opinion. That would be gravy rather than yes, even counting yes. on any of it. Yeah. Frankly, yeah, I, I, that's kind of where I am after looking at it. But again, uh, others smarter than me who know more about it would should look at it. Dean, 
um, not yet spoken about is the infrastructure bill that has yet to even pass. Is there yeah. anything in that that will help fund new schools? I, mean, I don't know. One, I, I, one presumes I, that I, if that's... Right. Okay, hold. All right, we're going to go to a hearing on December 16th, right? So in six weeks, we're going to have a hearing with the public. The school committee is going to have to get up and talk about this debt, what it's going to cost. And, and I think they're probably, if I were them, I would like some sort of a, a explanation of how it's going to be absorbed by taxpayers. So I think that's a good idea to put on the list, but I don't think it's practical for us to draw it in now because now is when we're going to go to the voters. So right. we don't know what it is. So I can't put that on the list yet. Yep. I don't. Okay, fair okay. enough. Um, good. Mary. I just want to make a comment to Amrith. Um, Amrith, and I thought you brought up a really good thing. We don't want to be doing this every time a project pops up and they pop up. Yep. But this, this, what we're doing right now is because we have an incredibly large project in front of us. So I think it's worthwhile to go through the shaving exercise for now. And I don't think we're gonna have, if I think we're putting in some ideas in place that so we won't have to do it every time. Well, that's all. This is just an out of scale project yep. that, re, that requires different, a different it approach. It is, it so is. And the timing of it is just not great, right? So if, right. if, you know, it is what it is, but this is why this process that we're going through tonight is a good process, right? To be able to look at yeah. what happens to debt and capacity when you so, load projects in. So it's a good thing to do it. It's, so it's, Christine, may I respond to before. that maybe with a question? Yeah. Um, so maybe the reason in which I was thinking of having a limit is because we have this one project and that project is not just what it is doing, but what it is taking away from other projects. Let's assume that this middle school wasn't there and everything else was life as usual. The project, which is gonna add $111 to your tax bill, no problem. It's because of this $1,000 on your tax bill that the additional ones are harder. Therefore, in the future, even if there is a small project, you may have exactly the same conversation because you've already bitten off the $1,000 project. Uh, That's the reason why I'd like to, I'd like to yeah. have this in place because the future small projects are going to have this conversation again. I mean, again, we're we're going to send a list of recommendations, right, Mary? So I think yep. that's not a bad. That's you know, that's another way to look at it, right? To yep. say, do you want to cap the amount of the tax bill that's tied to excluded debt, and do you want to cap it somewhere a thousand, twelve hundred? I, I, you know, it's another way to look at it. So yeah, yep. I, I, yeah. So okay, I think that's a pretty good list. <laughs> you guys. So let's 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 talk about. Let, let me put them in order. Let me read them out. And then let's see if uh, I'm gonna try and put them in some sort of priority based on uh, what I think the impact is. And then we'll see if we come up with a recommendation. All right, so um, the items that we have are the Board of Assessors review. So that that's, includes two items, the look at the reserve as well as the 500,000. We have the, the one idea, which is the uh, increasing the debt term to 30 years, which is, impactful. We also have the 500,000 for free cash from this year or potentially future years to help build up debt stabilization. In addition to increasing the, um, the taxes now in 23, 24, and 25 to also build up the stabilization. So I guess we have kind of- uh, Can you and break those apart? Yeah. Can you we, break those into two different, two different ones? Yeah, yes, absolutely. So, okay. All right, so, so if you think about it, the types, we have stabilization and we have a couple different ways to get there. So we have the Board of Assessors item, we have free cash, and then we have the tax rate. So we have three ideas to create stabilization. Those are the three ideas we have. And then separately, we have debt term, and then thirdly, we have ARPA. Those are the three, those are the three categories that we have. So of the three, ARPA debt stabilization, and stabilization has three subsets, which do you think comes first? Chris, I, before, I just wanna suggest a slight um, amendment to the, the term. I think uh, one of the things we talked about that was appealing, and maybe this would be standard practice anyway, 
is that the debt be callable after a period? The expectation is that it could be called after what we're advised in, is an appropriate period for this kind of debt, which is probably 10 years. Right. Um, but that gives us an opportunity in the, in the medium term to address mm -hmm. the increased um, the, yeah. the increased increase, uh, interest it. expense. Yep, good. So we would say we would say our debt item is both term and call options. Right, yeah. exactly. Perfect. Okay. So I I say stabilization is our number one priority. So I'm going to put okay. that out there. Raise your okay. hand if you like that idea. Raise your hand if you like stabilization first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so ten people like that. What if you who likes debt? Uh, term and call options first. One, two, okay. Two, I got two for that. And then um, who likes ARPA first? Anybody? No, okay. Isn't ARPA just a given to ask, right? I mean, yeah. it's an ask, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay, so if we go, so if stabilization is first, which it looks like that's the consensus of the committee that we would wanna go stabilization first, and I'm not sure you can do it without debt, but in any event, stabilization first. So within that, we have the board of assessors going to them. Can you release some of the reserve? Can you? Can we avoid going to the town manager and say, let's not build up another 500,000 in that reserve or add 500,000 out of free cash or move the tax rate from let's say two and a half to three. So those three options within there, do you have any strong sense of which of those you prefer? I'll read them out. So the Board of Assessors Reserve, people like that first. I kind of like that first. Wouldn't that drive our decision on the other two as well? It, it would be helpful. It's it's a little bit found ready, right? So one, two, three. Sorry. what are the three? Board of Assessors is one. What were the other two? Uh, free cash. Asking for free cash for half a million or so. Can we okay. talk for a minute about how much? Because I said five and, and Parashar said a million. Yeah. So can we okay. take a minute and just see how much, uh, I mean, I'm okay with going up to a million actually. Uh, can, so, I, can I ask one other question? I, I don't think you even have to decide it, frankly. No, just so so ask for, really? Ask for free it. cash, yeah. right? We, we don't need to be okay. this predictive guys. So can we, so it's, it's just but, go but to the Chris, board of Chris, assessors to ask, yeah, Brian. Chris, one question. So is this really an or, or is this actually an and? Because I feel like, this is an and, this is an and situation. Yeah. This is not an yeah. or okay. situation. Yeah. Okay, that's if good. It's an, good if, to know. if it's okay. an and situation, yes, the yes, numbers yes. don't really matter at this point. Yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. Okay, Chris, is it helps to frame it in terms of um, stating the ultimate goal that what we're trying to do mm -hmm. is establish um, mm -hmm. a stabilization fund at in a certain within a certain range. Yep. And these are the components we're looking at to to piece together that that full amount. Yes, okay. yes, I'd say so. So I think you need to be, as I said, I think it, it's if you want a million six a year for those three years, you're at the $5 million level. So yep. Terry had said four. Um, so I'm happy if we wanna say four to 5 million, my, my preference is higher, but four to 5 million is okay with me if people wanna put a range on how large a stabilization reserve you'd like. Sounds good. Does that sound good to people? Over to five million. I, 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 where do we go on the um, free cash? I would. We're I'm not going to set a number. We're not going to set a number. We're going to say there's three sources for it, right? So we're just going to say go to free cash if you if you've got it, right? We're not going to argue about the five hundred or a million. There's going to be won't other. Will they be asking for us though? Won't they eventually? Won't the select board eventually ask? In the past, the. The finance committee has always given them a number that we recommend. So at some point- For use of free cash? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. maybe oh, they'll so have but, but here's, here's the thinking though, right? At, we should ask the board of assessors by a date yeah. certain what how much they can give us. That should be the first- well, I'm not gonna ask the board of assessors. So this is a recommendation going well, to the select board, so, right? So they, let me, they're let gonna, me, they can decide if they fair, what they wanna do, right? So this fair is- Fair enough, but I, guess, but I guess things should be sequenced a bit. Okay. Whether it's also the select board. But from my perspective, you grab the money from that overlay account or whatever it's called first. Yep. Say they give us 700,000. Yep. Then to the point of 5 million divided by three years or 5 million, whatever, you can then say this year, 
where you've got 500,000 or 700,000 to give, and maybe you've made up this year's number. Do you see what I'm right. saying? Yes, I do. Ah, okay. Yeah, so that's actually yep. a good point. So if we said we're looking for, we think we have 2 million in stabilization reserve now, we think you need four to 5 million. Yep. And that could mean a million a year, 23, 24, 25. We think these are the places you can get yep. it from. Yep. And I think that works, right? So get a yep. million dollars a year and get up there. Yep. And you, yep. you can look for these, for these sources for it. And then that yep. gives them you know, the, the options to go get it. I would add Good. one other tweak. If you can yeah. feel like you can make a little bit more this year, it might save you from trouble next year, right? So yep. maybe it's 1.2 this year. Yep. So that's the caveat I would add. Yeah, yeah. do it as soon as you can. <laughs> yes. Exactly. That was raised Okay, point. that's yeah. good. That's good. I like that. Okay, good. I like that. Um, let me uh, let me see here. Okay, so we're going to say stabilizations first. Here's your ideas on that. Debt is second, and there we're interested in extending the term, but also looking at whether call options would help you because you have a three-year problem in 25, 26, 27. How do you want to, you know, how do you want to go at it? And lastly, uh, gravy, go look at ARPA and see if you can get some funds there to bring the cost down to the building. The, the, the only question I have, all that sounds fine, Chris, but the only question I have around that is the debt doesn't strike me as being an or either. It, if we're going to do the stabilization fund, we're probably going to need to do the debt as well. It's a combination of those yes, things. Yes, so yes, yes. Uh, yeah. I just want to make sure that yeah, we don't yeah. we don't make the distinction here that this yes. is sort of you do one, two, or three because right. it, it could confuse yeah. the situation. Yeah. Okay. We can start. Uh, what I would do is I would say, look, the goal here, similar to what Amrith was saying, is like we're trying to bring the number down. We think maybe it should be a thousand, eleven hundred, twelve hundred. This maybe a thousand to twelve hundred is where we think you should probably end up. How you get there. This is, these are the options we think that are on the table that are real. You've, you've got to increase the stabilization reserve and you've got to deal with debt term. Those are probably your two options. And if ARPA comes through, that's great, but you're not going to know that for a while. Okay. It's, so, not, it's not in our bailiwick, but if we have a good call option in there and we find out some way to monetize Peabody, we could really we could really do some damage to this thing. You know? Yeah, if, if that, so, and again, that's great. And in the future, if you could, right? But yeah. you know, it's again, so, that's not a bird in the hand, but I, yeah, I agree. Exactly. Yeah, that, 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 that's and that's on the list. That's right. that's you have a call option. You, now, you have, now you have some headroom to, to work with that. Exactly. Yes, that, right. That's an excellent point because the, the challenge with yeah. that, the value that's buried in Peabody is a timing issue, among other things. But yes. when your problem is a timing issue, you can't realize it in time to 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 use okay. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good but point. the call option gives you a second bite. Right, yeah. it does. Good point. Good point. Okay. Can I make a motion? Oh. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I make, well, a motion. I, I make a motion that we authorize Christine Reynolds to write a letter on behalf of the Finance Committee to the Select Board outlining what we just discussed. Second. Hang, hang, hang on. Do <laughs> you have a question, Brian? Or are you sorry? I think I think Greg is right in terms of pro you have to rescind your you motion. You have to rescind Greg. mine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. Rescind, uh, Greg, will you, will you please rescind your motion? <laughs> I rescind my motion. Okay. Yeah, Reynolds Great. rules. Chair, right. <laughs> right. All right, Mary. All right, Mary. All right. Take Mary, it away. Take it I away. Do it again. Okay, I make a motion that the Finance Committee authorize Christine Reynolds on behalf of the Finance Committee to um, write a letter to the Select Board outlining um, our recommendations to alleviate the debt expense from the middle school. Second. 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 Oh. Okay. All right, then I will take a vote. Chris Reynolds, I vote yes. Greg Gariello. Yes. Ray Andrews. Yes. D. Ortner. Yes. Eric Dahlberg. Yes. Mary Hartman. Yes. Amrith Kumar. Yes. Ryan Taylor. Yes. Parashar Patel. Uh, you're on mute. Yes, and I'm assuming it gets copied to the school committee, right? Uh, uh, yeah, it can be. It, it abs it's no problem with it. It's really, a, it's really a letter to the select board. We can copy whoever we'd like it, uh, on it, I'm sure. If that's what you'd prefer, we can do that. Although none of the direction in here is to them, right? So 
it's really a it's really a select board discussion. We're all in this together. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> Dean Banfield. Yes. Uh, Lois Wasoff. Yes. Kathy Kukolo. Yes. Peggy Briggs. Yes. Okay. I think I've asked everybody. Is that correct? Oh, Dee, did I not get you? I apologize. Oh, you got me before. Oh. I have a comment. Oh, please. And I, I would like to thank you. And I'd like to thank, I think the whole committee would like to thank you and Carrie for the presentations that you made and all the time and effort you've put into guiding us through this this sure. evening. Thank you. Okay. It was fun. Okay, so, all right. So we have a, a unanimous vote on that. I will work on the letter. So we also have public comment this evening. So um, I don't know if we have any um, folks from the public who would like to comment on what we discussed this evening or the long-term capital plan that's in front of the community, but let's give a we, second to see if anyone does. We've got one resident, uh, Joel Gagne. Uh, yes, please, please um, okay. uh, promote Joel. Mr. Gagne, you're on the panel. Could you just say your name and address? Sure, Joel Gagne, 31 Central Street. Okay. Great. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you for all of your work. I know that there's lots of hours that go into this, and I just want to thank you. Um, I am co-chair of a group called um, Conquer Community for Great Schools, and our we view our job here is to make sure that the middle school project comes to fruition. And, you know, I just want to be able to sit there and say um, that the building committee that has put forward this project has done an absolutely phenomenal job. And because of the phenomenal job that they've done, we are very proud to sit there and get together a coalition to make sure that this is approved at town meeting and at the ballot. Um, I also just want to say that no one got what they wanted in this, according to my research. This is not a Taj Mahal. Um, school buildings are expensive to build. Um, in this line of work, and I'm here to tell you, they're just not that cheap. Um, so uh, I know that this has been capped at $100 million, and my request to this committee is just very simple. That number was set in 2019. Obviously, the world's been turned upside down, and I really do hope that, you know, that that number is not considered something hard and fast. We believe that this project has, this is the building that the community wants. Not everyone was happy with it, but it's it, it is something that that dirty word compromise was actually happening at this at the building committee. This is the building that the community wants, and because of that, we believe that the community now has the ha, deserves the right to vote on this up or down. And there should not be any type of hard cap if this number goes over 100 million, which it might, it might not. We don't know, but if it does, we are looking to the finance committee, the selectmen the school committee and the building committee to let the people have their say whether or not they will support this project that they're willing to raise their taxes. This has been a very open process. The communities had their say in what building they want. Now they should deserve to have their say on whether or not they want to, want to fund it. I want to encourage this committee not to make mistakes that have been done in the past in this community when it's come to some of these buildings of some short-sighted thinking instead of the long-term usage of these buildings and what it, what it costs. And I know you guys have done a great job. And I just want to, again, thank you that, you know, for all the work that you've done. And we just want to say that we're really, really grateful. And I hope that you'll, you'll take that into consideration as this project continues to move forward. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Joel. Are there any other comments, Chris? Are there any other public uh, comments for us? No, we've just got Matt Johnson, Cynthia Rainey, and they, they're not raising their hands. Okay, um, either Matt or Cynthia, if you have any uh, comments on our deliberations, now's a good time to uh, to come up if you if you've got anything. Otherwise, we're we'll probably adjourn. Matt's uh, raising his yes, hand. hand up. Great, Matt, please please bring him up. I, uh, I just wanted to say that on the debt term, I'm really of two minds here, and I'm just speaking as a citizen. I am a member of the select board, but not 
able to speak for the board uh, yet. Uh, so the if you look at that plan, the only reason that it's not an even bigger hit to our taxes is because of our past policies in funding other projects of having a more accelerated retirement of debt. And you know we just need to be aware that if we do this, uh, you know, extend the term to 30 years, we're tying the hands of whoever's in the future, and they're going to have an even bigger problem if a big project comes forward, you know, with the same sorts of, of issues we've struggled with tonight. And so that's one half of my feeling, and, and I just feel like our predecessors and their prudence have made our job actually easier. Um, and we don't want to be the ones making our successors jobs harder. Um, but then the other thing on my mind is just looking at the potential for inflation increasing and, and that if we lock in long term debt now, it might be considered the deal of the century. Um, you know, and that we probably want to borrow as much as we can for as long as we can. So, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to. Uh, just let policy get in the way of good timing. Um, so I, I just wanted to put that out there. And then I've separately offline, I'm pursuing the question of the salt shed because I, I've been poking around and I, I'm having a hard time finding a salt shed that costs more than 2 million bucks. Um, so uh, if you all know of one, I, I did find one in Manhattan, it was 20 million, but it, it's a... Uh, <laughs> It's a 10 story sculpture. It's really <laughs> remarkable and it services all of Manhattan. Right. Um, <laughs> Good. Well, thank you. Thank you for your comments, Matt. We appreciate them. Okay. And I'm sure, I'm sure, um, as I said, we'll, we'll be sending a, 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 a letter and, and um, you know, ask for the select board's consideration of some of the ideas that we have. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Hey, Chris, Chris, can I ask a question? I know Joel Gagney was on a minute ago. He's still on. Did he identify his address? Or did uh, I miss that? I think he did. Yeah, yes, he, he did. did. He did. The beginning. He did. He yeah, did. we're good on I don't that. remember what it was, but he did. <laughs> okay, good. All right. I will take a motion to adjourn. We've, we've got one more. Wait, Cynthia oh, Rainey has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Great. Cynthia, please come up. She is joining the panel. Thank you. Ms. Rainey, if you could just say your name and address. You're muted. She's, it takes a second, I think, to come up. No, but she's still muted. She's she's she has muted. herself muted. Thank oh. you. <laughs> Hi, Cynthia. So, uh, Cynthia Rainey and 80 Hunters Ridge Road, I want to thank you for the conversation. And I just want to uh, request if there's any way we can get this video posted tomorrow, because um, I would like to encourage the other members of the school committee to watch it who might not have been able to attend tonight um, to help us with our conversations next Tuesday. Um, uh, so, because I think there's a lot of good ideas and information um, that would benefit us all. And we will be getting the estimates tomorrow at the building mm -hmm. committee meeting um, to help us inform uh, further conversation on the number. Uh, but I think you, you guys did a great job tonight because this is all very complicated. And having been on the board of assessors, I'll tell you that um, I'm sure the board will uh, work with the town assessor and deliberate on this and come back with a great idea, but it's, it's complicated. Um, and uh, as Carrie knows, <laughs> so 101 on an assessment in Concord would be a, a good eight hour meeting, I'm sure. <laughs> right, I'm is, sure. Is Cynthia, during tomorrow's meeting, are we gonna make this like the Academy Awards where an envelope is handed to somebody <laughs> and they open it up live for the cost <laughs> estimate? <laughs> Somebody's going to come in with a suitcase, exactly. <laughs> right. So, um, but it, it's, a, it's a big project. And, you know, this isn't the, the, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done even after we get through the schematic design, as you all know. So um, we have to go to DD and CD and, you know, there's, and the bids have to go out. So there's, you know, there's a, a long road to go, but it's it's a good road. So. Hey, Parashar, uh, I just want to let you know that 
there was a year that the, they got it wrong. So I don't know if you remember that. So we'll, let's not jinx, please let's not jinx this. And what happened? Right. Well, I remember that the it was CEO, PwC. It was my old firm. I think it was PwC. Heads rolled. Uh, it, it was yeah, bad. Oh, it was yeah. bad. So, oh, so I would pay for that, there to be a number that would uh, not yeah, we be the number. <laughs> we won't jinx it. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you for hanging out for a, a long meeting. We appreciate it. And, Have a great uh, night. Yeah, we'll look forward to uh, future discussions. Absolutely. Okay. So I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we're gonna do a roll call vote. Greg Gariello. Yes. Chris Reynolds, yes. Ray Andrews. Yes. Uh, D. Ortner. Yes. Eric Dahlberg. Yes. Mary Hartman. Yes. Amrith Kumar. Yes. Brian Taylor. Yes. Dean Banfield. Yes. Parashar Patel. Yes. Kathy Kukolo. Yes. Lois Wasoff. Yes. Peggy Briggs. Yes. All right. Uh, I think we got them all. Thank you so much for all your hard work and hanging in there. And we'll Thank see you. you, I think, in, oh, you're welcome. We'll see you, I think it's two weeks is our, is our next meeting. I think that, is that right?